Johnny Monoxide, co-creator and founder of the Paranormies. Can you hear me, sir? Of course, it's Telegram. You have to unmute yourself after I do it. Oh, my God. I hey. Telegram. What's up, bro? I, I do too. What's up, man? How's it going? I... Uh, my legs are tired from running victory laps. <laughs> I could imagine. Yeah. I could imagine. I uh, mean, I mean, I don't want to brag or nothing, but uh, Johnny Monoxide won. I think uh, uh, Sven even said that here. By the way, Larry said he, he said will it. pop. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, he's, he said it many times, dude. Have you, have you heard the really drunk shit? No, I haven't. Um, but I uh, think we have a copy of that somewhere. I have. I have. I have a bunch of stuff clipped. If you uh, want. Yeah, I definitely send it all. Yeah, I definitely want it all. But there's two parts. So Rand has some kind of fit or something and ends this stream yep. in like the next 30 minutes uh, on our replay here. And then um, they go over to Just some other channel. Tweet. Yeah, okay, but... I'm sending them. Okay, I got to send them one at a time. God damn it. Okay, that's fine. That's the definitive on the Soft oh, oh, I hear it. I hear it there. You can play oh, you it through yours. Yeah, if it patches through, just play it through. Okay, this is this is called Sven Johnny Abandon Us. Um, first, I just want to preface this with I've never met Rand. I've never spoken to Rand. I have no idea who he really. I know he's like a little Sven nut hugger guy, but uh, he hates me. He calls me, a, you know, never want to be friends with me. Whatever. I've never. He's had nothing but disdain for me this whole time. I've never met the guy. All I know is that he almost killed his kid. So. Yeah, anyway, that's true. Gets, in the pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he gets drunk at like 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 pass out drunk at nine o'clock in the morning. So I really don't give a fuck about what that guy has to say about anything. So that being said, here is Sven Johnny abandoned us. All right, let's hear it. Fuck striker. Yeah. It is degenerate ass. Johnny probably wasn't wrong. Oh, turn it up a little bit too. If you can. It, it's up all the way. Oh, okay. Well, it's a little low, but I think they can hear. Well, yeah. I mean, buying, buying, buying a kid a steak isn't the end of the world, especially if he apologizes to you. But, you know, you're not supposed to do that. All right. There's the misrepresentation right off the bat. First of all, fucking lying motherfuckers, okay? The, miss the whole point of that story. The whole point of that steak story, Ralph, is you know what it is, right? Is that you don't fucking do that to another guy in front of his kid and whatever. Right. But Stryker had been doing a bunch of shit, offering my kid booze on a regular basis after being told not to. And we talked about all that. And the point about the steak story isn't that, that he tried to buy my kid a steak and punk me or whatever. Is that he broke down like a bitch later on that night and cried about it. My father never bought me nothing. Right? <laughs> so that's the point that they're misrepresenting completely. And Jesse would sit. We used to sit in this little hug box on, um, oh, what, not Telegram, what's the other thing? Threema. And we would sit in his little hug box. It was me and him and a couple other guys who were used to be TRS OG guys that are no longer around. I still talk to them, but they will never speak to those people ever again. Um, and I told the steak story, and everybody knows the steak story, and they laughed at it, and they laughed at Stryker, and they're like, what a fucking idiot. Oh, my God, he cried like, oh, I fucking loser, blah, 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 his father, oh, your father never loved me, right? But now, when it's convenient for them, it's, oh, Johnny's just holding a grudge for many years. It's really strange. That's why he's the schizo. Anyway. Yeah, and we talked about that on the kill stream. I think it was summer 2022. And, yep. you know, anybody with a brain, that's super fucked up to do. I mean, I don't blame you for, <laughs> like, you know, trying to big league you in front of your kid. Yeah, go ahead. You can tell a right. short version of it, too, if you want. Yeah, well, no, just my kid was trying to be, my kid was trying to be cute. We all went out to eat after Stryker and Mike uh, were doing blow in the bathroom together at the fucking roller rink, um, which is absolutely true. Uh, Rand will actually ask, Rand actually asks, Sven about the coke thing and, and Jesse's like, oh, I don't know. He knows. He knows. Trust me, he knows. But um Yeah, so we went out to get some lunch after that, and my kid being funny, he's like, Hey Dad, can I get the steak? Most expensive thing on the diner menu, right? And I'm like, come on, dude, we're gonna have a big there was a big dinner later on that night. I'm like, come on, just get a fucking burger like everybody else. And Striker's like, Oh, come on, come on, Johnny, let me buy him a steak. And like, I don't know this guy. Like, he's you're Mike's friend. I don't know you from really from Adam. You're a podcaster, like, and you you hang out with these guys. I don't really know you. You're not Uncle Striker. You're not my brother. You're none of that shit. Anyway, so long story short, it went back and forth a couple times, and I finally told him no. And my kid got a burger later on that night at Mike McKevitt's party, which was probably trying to set up a threesome, I believe, maybe. But, uh, <laughs> that's, but uh, yeah. Um, oh yeah, the the, <laughs> the Nash boy. There's so many different ways to say their name now, um, but. Later on, Stryker calls me over. He's all fucking drunk and his wife beat her. Johnny, man, all I want to do is buy the kid a steak, man. You just reminded me of my father so much, man. He never bought me nothing. 
right? And he broke down and cried. And Jesse laughed at him. We laughed at Stryker about that for many, many, many months. And for him to say, everything that Jesse says about me, he's going to go into when he gets really drunk and talks about how much he loves me and then how much he hates me because I fucked him over. Like this whole thing started with me because I said something about Stryker to somebody that, that TRS doesn't like. I don't know if you know who Pikachu is. I've heard the name, uh, but I don't know. I'm not... Red, she does a podcast called Red, White, and Black Pill. She's from Romania. Okay. She got catfished by Spectre, and that's how she's involved with TRS. And she hates TRS because of Spectre. Anyways, um, she's the one who doxed Jesse and Mike's uh, gated Jewish community. Oh, uh, I have heard yeah, about that. Not me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jesse lives about a stone's throw away from a uh, synagogue inside a gated community, which you'll hear in one of these clips where he's uh, yelling about, you guys are never going to come to my house anyways. Fuck you. Yeah, you can't. You have a gate guard, faggot. By the so, way, if anyway. you have another clip, send it to me because the audio was a little bit low uh, on the last one. All right, I'm, just gonna, all right, I'm just going to select all these and send them all to you. So you okay, that's fine. Yeah, go ahead. We're live with Johnny Monoxide uh, of the Paranormies here on the kill stream. We had to cut the kick transmission. It got a little too... A little too spicy uh, for kick, unfortunately, uh -oh. but uh, we may start it back up after we go through some of these clips. Uh, so there you go. I dropped them all. Okay. All right. Now let's see. Now, uh oh, I see here, uh, and I think Larry might pop in at some point. Um, all right. Oh, nice. So Johnny, my Abano boy Larry Ridgeway. Yes, your boy Larry Ridgeway, my boy too. I love I do too. He's great. He's always been a great friend throughout all the knots. You know, there's always some drama, always some crazy stuff going you remember on. Remember the. You remember his drunk stream where he like shot yes. on everybody for half a second? He, yes. the, the only person he actually apologized to was me. Wow. Really? Yeah. You know, yep. it's funny because I didn't know Larry at that point, but everybody was like, Ralph, you got to hear this. You got to play this. Da, da, da. And I actually listened to it off air. And I remember listening to it like, damn, this guy's absolutely going off. Uh, and so that was before we got to be friends. Not too long before because uh, I reached out to him. I don't know, a few months later, but yeah, that was before uh, we actually started talking. But he just really, just a straight up guy. Uh, and he doesn't really let is. the he doesn't let the drama or who doesn't like who or this or that. And now I can, you hear Rand, you know, bringing me up out of nowhere because he used to be a friend of mine, and he's like just yep. frothing at the mouth. You know, he's mad. He's mad. It's like it's like an ex lover type situation, right? When I'm not even mentioned, he's like, oh, he talks to either Ralph. Duh. Well, Larry's not that yeah. way, right? Uh, so all right, let's see. So the first one uh, start the. First First one, yeah, Johnny. That. That's how they got sent to me. So go ahead. Okay, all right. I'll start at uh, Sven Johnny Abandon. Now you won't be able to hear it, by the way, because my patch through doesn't work correctly. So, but you've heard the clip anyway. Oh, I think. So. Yeah. Well, when you taste, yeah. Well, yeah. Do. Yeah. Uh, or you can listen to it on stream uh, on the Rumble stream. Uh, Rumble stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Rumble stream. You can just listen. It shouldn't be that long of a of a yeah. delay, but. Uh, all right, and I'm sorry about that. I got this new laptop, and for some reason, the USB, I don't know, the pastor doesn't work anymore. Um, all right, so I'll go ahead and hit the first one right now. That's the definitive on an Fuck answer Stryker. that people were looking for. <laughs> Fuck Striker. Yeah. And his degenerate yeah. ass. Johnny probably wasn't wrong. And I just sit here and fucking defend that asshole because Johnny turned on all of us. Well, Johnny was also a massive faggot. So, um, well, yeah. I mean, buying you buying buying a kid a steak isn't the end of the world, especially if he apologizes to you. But you know, you're not supposed to do that. But he was parent shamed. What he was parent know? shamed. You're not supposed to. <laughs> if, the, the difference. The difference is though, if Johnny, did, if if Stryker did that to me, I would just be like, "What the fuck is wrong with this guy?" I wouldn't like carry it around for years as like this deep, terrible thing that happened. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, that that was always the thing that struck me. I was like, why, why, okay, like it, it was a social faux pas. Why, why is so fucking? But then, well, because Johnny had other, because Johnny had other problems with him, like other personal issues. So does that mean? Does that no. mean that Striker really was doing bumps in the bathroom? Like, <laughs> oh, I, I have no, I have no evidence of that, but I have no idea. Mm. Well, look, you know, I mean, far be it from me to accuse Johnny Monoxide of just literally inventing things out of whole cloth. So, you know, Imperial Fisting, guy guys. Stryker believes Stryker. that the moon's made out of cheese. <laughs> I think the moon is... I There's moon Rand is. talking about uh, integrity and storytelling, which is pretty funny coming from him. Yeah, it's hilarious. It's uh, hilarious. Well, he says, he, he does the thing where he goes, Johnny believes the moon's made of cheese. I'm like, no, that's literally something I've never said. Like, ever. We may, like, think the moon landing was fake, but I've never said that the, the moon is made of fucking cheese, Rand, you fucking drunk faggot. 
Rand is a classic example. Somebody thinks they're way funnier than they are. Gets steamrolled in his own show. Oh, man. It was pretty bad. Uh, caller steamrolling him, too. Just mind-boggling to me. Um, all right. I'll play the next one. Uh, Sven, gay opt into hating Johnny. I think we heard this one, but I'm going to play it again because you're here now. 24 seconds. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's not long. Uh, all right. I'll go ahead and hit it right now. I'm tired of everything. Everything that happened in the last three years is fucking horrible. Even Johnny. I was gay opt into hating Johnny by uh, Vasily and Tony. Oh, no, I just no, want to say that Johnny really is a cunt. I don't want to be friends with Johnny. I mean, he 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 did he he did too much. I could never like go back to him, but it's like yeah, that was a psyop. That was a total. Fuck. I got played by this guy named Vasily in Ohio, who's good friends with Tony and Jazz Hands. I'm gonna make crap. Totally. Yeah. So Sven says he was gay opt uh, into yes. into hating yeah. you, Vasily. I don't know, but Tony Hovater, I think, is the other guy he's talking about, right? Yeah, he's talking about Tony Hoveter and Vasily, who is uh, Tony Hoveter's like consigliare or something. Okay. He <clears throat> he's a wannabe big time donor to the NJP. Um, I know the guy personally. I met him. Uh, he's he's probably one of the most deeply closeted fags I've ever met. He may not even be closeted, but he's trying. But um, <laughs> yeah, he owns a poodle, like a full size poodle, standard. Like, yeah. With haircuts and stuff. Yeah, that's kind of gay. That's pretty. Um, cool. Yeah, but he. Tony, he flies Tony all over the country first class to do these things, to go to these things. He pays for Tony to fly first class. He doesn't pay for them. His mom works for Delta and gives him free Sky Miles. So that's how he gets Tony to fly around. He He's like a manager at a uh, service manager at a car dealership. And he makes good money. So he donates a lot of it to the NJP. So because of that, he's bought Tony's trust. And because of that, they all hated me because everybody likes Johnny. Everybody loves Johnny. Like Larry, all that stuff. Like, who does the only person Larry apologized to was Johnny, because everybody fucking loves Johnny. And you get into these things where where Sven's talking about how much he still loves me and wants to give me a hug, but fuck me because I turn Johnny turned on everybody. Fuck you, Jesse. You literally put out a burn notice the minute you found out that I said to Pikachu. This is all that I fucking said. Um, she said. Stryker doesn't run Mike anymore. I think Mike is actually kicking Stryker out. This is two and a half years ago. And I said, no, I'm pretty sure Stryker's still in his ear like Salacious Crumb to Jabba the Hutt. That's literally all I said. Somebody screen capped it and sent it to Jesse, and Jesse did his little bitch made fucking, that's it, he's burned, burn them all, burn it. So people that were my friends IRL, really good friends of mine, somebody that I had spent a month at their house doing electrical work for them, is no longer allowed to talk to me. Some people who were friends with my kid, no longer allowed to talk to me, okay? They, no, I turned on them. These people, and it's not that Jesse did any of this stuff, but he didn't stop any of it, and he could have. These people were posting publicly that I rape my own son. They used my full name. Um, Tony Hover posted my address and said things like, m using my full name, saying that I rape my kid. Okay, these are the kind of things. And so, so Jesse, <clears throat> yeah, I turned on all of you. Fuck you, dude, you fucking snake. This whole thing, this whole Jesse six-hour stream is him saying it wasn't me, it was everybody else, I'm the victim here. Classic, classic Jewish pill pull, actually. Um, it, it just, it's like he's, he's been around them for so long, he hates them for so long that he's just turned into one. I don't know. But he's the slimiest snake I've ever met. When you get, just listen to this shit, dude. It's fucking, oh, dude. I, and I also found out that I almost died at one point. Really? When did we get to that? Did you guys hear about that? I didn't hear about it, no. Oh, let's hear it. Go to the third one. Jazz Johnny fight. Listen okay. to that. All right. We're going to play that yeah. one next. There's a couple super chats that came in. Uh, Lance says, okay. I want to say what's up to Johnny and also all the faggots in Paranormies chats. Paranormies chat like house. He says house Jew and Hans faggot. Shout out to Liquid Stella. He says, I don't know the meaning of this, but he says, Johnny, I'm eating a KC strip steak right now. Johnny Jr. is missing out is what he said. Okay. All right. A couple yeah, they, they, yeah. 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 That's I, cool, Lance. That's uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I know uh, this kid. I know this kid. Okay. All right. You know. All right. Uh, I'll play the uh, the Jazz Johnny fight. Uh, getting a gun? Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. I'll pl I'll play this, and you can listen on the Rumble stream. I'll hit it right now. Did he really get into a fight with Johnny about the flat Earth? Yep. <laughs> my my wife my wife physically broke that fight up. Oh. I would. I that I, that needs to be into the TRS movie when it, whenever it's made. No, I. Um, I well, my, Jazz Hands went to his car to get his gun. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ! Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm gonna just. Oh yeah. The so little. Oh, uh, he had some kind of weapon in his car. It was okay. Weapon. And this, and by the by the way, this all happened. So 
Are you familiar with the uh, Rhodes slope stuff that's out there? All right, now he's going to get into the road stuff. That's like okay. another thing. Stop this there. Okay, yeah, hold on. Let me. Here, I'll pause it right there. There, go ahead. Yeah. So <laughs> it wasn't a fight over flat earth. Jesse's drunk. Um, that's just <laughs> him. That's bullshit. That's, that's bullshit. What happened was we were talking about, they were, he was jazz. You know what jazz hands is, right? Yes. Yes. So jazz hands uh, was doing his usual blowhard, narcissistic, uh, full of himself shit. And was like mocking me, you know, conspiracy guy, right? And I, and I, it was a couple of different things. He might have said something about flat. It wasn't a debate about flat earth. It wasn't a fight about that. What I said was, "Wow, dude! At least my best, my high school best friend didn't leave my political podcast because he figured out that politics is actually fake and gay." And he got up in my face and wanted because Halberstram was his fucking right. high school bestie, right? And he quit on him and blah 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 blah. And like he got fucking rage mad and like he stormed off. And I guess he went to go get his fucking gun. So there you go. There is your unhinged fucking NJP TRS fucking idiots. You're going to shoot Johnny. <laughs> that right? does seem a little drastic. Dude, say, okay. And I turned on them. I turned on them, he said. All right. I'll finish this. I'll yeah. finish this clip. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and hit it right now. The guy who's now a twink who like, takes it in the ass. Oh, not only fans, this friend of mine. Bro. You have to be more specific. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> There's just really only one guy. Bulbasaur? So you, you, you haven't seen the RJ Sloak, like, A-Log stuff? No. They tried to, I don't look right. into... I saw him bang, but it was a very boring drag. I try to avoid that shit. Right, I'm just yeah. trying to tell you, the fight between Jazz Hands and Johnny happened at that guy's house. Ooh. Oh, no. The guy who left it... The guy who, like, left his family... To like impregnate other girl, another girl, and then then to become like an an OnlyFans like gay twink. That fight happened in that house. So what you're saying is the fisting guys were over here. The fisting guys, <laughs> the fisting guys all shared a house together until they couldn't anymore. So like, if, oh, God, this story. So I'm just saying, if anyone's trying to speak out of turn, he's clearly know, drunk like, here. Yeah. Guy was a friend of ours, oh, he's so fucking hammered, dude. Became, yeah. Like, <laughs> faggot. Who does uh, drunk Jesse is like, like best Jesse. Yes. You know, like, <laughs> you had a punch him in his fucking face. face. So, yeah. <laughs> like, dude, the guy, the guy, he's like, clear, like you can hear when he gets into this stuff where he's talking about me. He's just lying, dude. You can, like, you can hear the lies. He's serious about the whole, like, I love Johnny. It's like my boy. But then he talks about how I did him dirty. You can just hear that that's not true. He's like, like he has to put like extra. A little, on it. yeah, a little hyperbole. Yeah, there. yeah exaggerated. Stop it for All right, I'll finish this. And then, Very performative. And Johnny, my wife like, is beating you. My wife is beating you. <laughs> you know, stopping you from beating each other. And you then Johnny like, tried to each other. Us back to the Airbnb and got pulled over by the cops because he's a fucking drunk moron. You should have punished her for stopping them. Uh, you're the drunk moron, he said. Um, mm. <laughs> all right, the, the next clip. Uh, oh, that's funny. Hold on. We got pulled over. Go we ahead. got pulled over. Yeah, okay? what happened there? So we're at Rhodes' house. Rhodes is the guy who now does gay tranny porn on OnlyFans, who is one of Jesse's best friends. Yes. He threw a party for himself because a bunch of people donated money for him when he was in the hospital for what he said was fungal pneumonia, but was actually AIDS. What? So, oh, yeah. Yeah. He told he got sick and lost like 100 pounds and was in the hospital and his wife and kids, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, so TRS did the usual, you know, fundraiser and raised a ton of money for the guy. And he recovered and got better, and he threw a party with the remainder of the money. And a bunch of people got together. You know, Jazz Hands was there, I was there, Jesse and his family. Well, anyways, we're doing the thing. And after Jazz Hands and I had our little beef, um, okay, so Jesse and his wife and his family and I were sharing an Airbnb that Rhodes had set up for us, right? Which is like right around the corner from his house, like a seven-minute drive, six-minute drive. Right. Um, after the jazz hands thing, I had started drinking a little bit more heavily, and I, because I was like, you know, pissed. And J uh, Jesse and his family rode with me to the to the Airbnb, and I rolled through a stop sign and got pulled over. And the cop was going to give me a DUI when he found out where I was going. And like, I don't know if he looked up something or what, but he told me to have a nice night and drive safe. So there's like the Fed stuff. This, have you heard the Fed allegations with that Rhodes guy? I have not actually. There's a lot. He was a he was a senator's aide, so he has some sort of federal clearance that never gets revoked throughout your entire life. 
there was he's got a lot of he's got a lot of weird stuff security on clearance. His life. Yeah, security clearance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and just the dude, I can forward you the pit. This is for a whole other show, to be honest. But uh, that whole saga is is ridiculous. Um, but yeah, so I got yeah I got away with a DUI because I said yeah I'm going to this house and Rhodes it was in his name. I don't know. I don't know. Cops let me go. So anyway. Uh, yeah, that that's the John was, was a drunk moron. Is I got I rolled through a stop sign and almost got a DUI. All right, now the next one is the Spin still loves Johnny and wants to give him a hug. Oh uh, yeah, this is this one's sad. This is uh, like he's this is sad. It's tough. All right, I'll go ahead and play that and I'll hit it right now. But I said he went so far. I love he Johnny. Deep, man, man. Let gone. me tell you something. Let me tell you something. That's not a person I, anymore. Let me tell you something. I hate, I hate white nationalism more because I can't be friends with John anymore. Oh, Johnny and, no. And Johnny and I fought yeah. perfectly. I loved him so much. I still oh. do. I still love John. I, I cannot tell you how much I would love to just walk out of of like I, I would love to just walk out of a bunker and see him and give him a hug. I fucking love that guy so much. He fucking did me so dirty. And this fucking this scene of politics did did me so dirty. I I what miss that guy. I cannot tell you how much I miss Johnny. Uh, what the Johnny, fuck? I, I, I never fucking agree with I, all the stuff he thinks about the world is retarded. Just as a dude, he's the fucking best, and I miss him so bad. I can't believe what this fucking guy did to me over the years. I cannot over over the like I wouldn't think like the the vaccine the the COVID vaccine was this like that was like a bio weapon. All because of that, the way this I loved him so much. We got along great. He has he owned That's gear of mine. I gave I gave him guitar equipment. He gave it back to me. It's just like now he he loves you and he misses you, Johnny. Do yep. what would you say to that? Do you miss him? No, no. <laughs> absolutely not. Not even I don't even have to think about it, dude. You allowed people that were supposed to be my friends to post pictures of my wife and call her nigger, with the words "nigger lover" across her forehead. Um, <clears throat> you knew this was going on, Jesse. You knew all this was going on, and you did nothing to stop it. You didn't talk to Tony Hoveter and tell him to tell his friends and stuff. You didn't, you know. These people posted my address and said that I raped my son. So whatever happens to you because of that, dude, because you took away my friend, my, my son's friends, you took away you, you all because, and later on, you're going to admit that I was right. You're going to admit that I was right. And you should have listened to me. And, and the whole thing about striker was true. And you, you chose, you chose your grift and your fucking fake job over your friends because you've never had a real friend, Jesse, because you don't treat real friends the way you treated me. So fuck you. I hope you're eating out of Kentucky fried chicken garbage dumpsters eventually. <laughs> Over 800 live here on the kill stream, 700 here plus on the main alone. We had to terminate the kick transmission, as I mentioned. Uh, talking to Johnny Monoxide about the recent, and we, we, we're going over Sven's comments. We'll get into some of the, the you know, just the analysis of NJP sure. and, and TRS2 after this. Uh, and we may have some all people right. drop in as well. We'll see. Um, all right. So the next one is Sven says Johnny separated because of COVID disagreements. Yes, this is straight up a lie, but go ahead. All right, I'll go ahead and hit that one, and I'll play it right now. Just COVID. He just hates me because of COVID. <clears throat> and he left you because of COVID? Like he was well, there? Well, he Sven, left you? Sven denies well, the mud flood, can. and that was just a breaking point. I don't care about the mud okay, flood. Like, I don't care about that stuff. Happen. It's like, why do we have to hate each other? I fucking, that guy was one of my closest friends. I would confide. That guy could embarrass me. Like for the to the end. He does sound close to tears. In him over the years. Oh no, he he, he cries. He cries. Uh. Implicitly, implicitly. But the fact that I was like, yeah, like all these narratives about COVID aren't real. They're not true. And he just like hated. I never me. cared about COVID. So he he it. sunsetted himself. That's our phrase, by the way, no, from the no, kill stream. But like, talking to people who dox me. Which one? There's people on sunsetted. Who me constantly. Oh whatever. Right. And he became, and he just like openly became his friend for them. I was like, well, fuck you. I have to kick you out now. I'm like, why? Well, so that was the point. That, not the point. Or or the, I would never, the... I would never ally and like give comfort and talk to somebody who doxed Johnny Monoxide's home and identity. I would never do that. He did that to me, and I just, I just told everyone I knew like this guy's persona non grata. Yeah, like, that's a cross you know, line. 
Mm. And he crossed the line, and it's like he can never come back from it because what he's, done since, then, what he's done since then is double and triple down on it. And I'm just like, it fucking it breaks my heart. I love Johnny. And I and his his, his criticisms of Striker, I shared, and he knew that, but he did it, but he did this to me anyway. All right. So he he says you co-signed, um, you know, doxing him. I think he says family. Um, left because yeah, of COVID. Yeah, yeah. No. Well, you can respond. Yeah, well, the COVID thing. <clears throat> okay. So this whole Jesse kicked uh, TRS off. Uh, Hoverter kicked or Jesse kicked Paranormies off. Hoverter got Paranormies kicked off. <clears throat> I was trying to leave. We were trying to leave. To actually, I told you this last time I was on. We were trying to leave. Jesse wouldn't let us leave. He didn't want Stryker even said, oh, come on, we're friends. If we can't keep Johnny on the network, are we even really friends? Like, what the fuck does that even mean, Joey? But, um, and I tried to leave. And he's like, Jesse's like, no, 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 come on. I don't know, whatever. Uh, we'll stick around, I guess. And like a month later, Jesse calls me. He's like, yeah, or though, no, Stryker and Alex descended into my chat and like, we're just being, I was like, oh, okay. So I can see the don't fuck with Johnny edict has been revised. And, uh, they Stryker and, and Alex came directly into my chat and just started, you know, trolling, right. Or talking shit, whatever. So I called Jesse. Jesse's like, yeah, Johnny. Well, here's the thing, man. You're doing like Alex Jones tier COVID conspiracy stuff. Because we said the thing that it's just the flu, bro. It's, you know, they're going to weaponize the flu. They're going to weaponize the common cold. And they did. That's exactly what happened. And then we've, we've said that from the beginning. There was no virus. I don't believe in, we don't, most of us in the paranormies don't believe in germ theory. Sorry if you, if you do, I don't know what to tell you. But um, it wasn't, we believed it was a bioweapon. He's lying. I never said that. None of us ever said that. They are the ones that came up with the crazy conspiracy theory. They, TRS was the ones that said that Jews came up with COVID because they were scared of Orthodox Jews giving them MERS. <laughs> Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome. Shut the fuck up. They shut down the world because they were afraid of a very tiny religious sect of their own people. That doesn't make any sense. But they, that's what they said. Anyhow, so that's not why. So Jesse says, Johnny, you're doing Alex Jones tier conspiracy theory stuff on COVID and Mike's trying to do a politics. So it's probably better off if you guys just, you know, you guys aren't on the network anymore. I'm like, cool, dude. I tried to leave two months ago. He's like, I know, I know, I know. But, you know, da, 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 da. I'm like, no, it's cool, dude. He's like, yeah, it's cool. And as soon as we left, finally, they kicked them off. Nobody kicked anybody off. We left. We tried to leave. It was amicable. Nobody. Tony might have tried. Jazz Hands and them and Stryker, they definitely wanted us gone because, yes, we do talk about things that they don't like. Like, trannies in the fucking media. Like, you know, uh, Flat Earth. We do. We talk about all kinds of shit, dude. You know? Talking about Jews 24 hours a day gets fucking boring. It does. It yeah. does. Somebody should look, tell Rand look. that, by the way. But anyway, go yeah, ahead. Fuck Rand, dude. <laughs> oh, God. Does he even exist? Because I'm not even sure Australia is real. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, um, so yeah, so Jazz Hands was going to pull a gun and kill me, um, uh, and, and I turned on them, bro. You hear this shit? You, you see, this is, I remember Vox Day wrote a book called SJWs Always, and it was like, SJWs Always Project, SJWs Always Lie. Huh. Well, I got a mention in the intro of that book, by the way. Shout out to Vox Day. You did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. go look. I, gotta look. I, I, yeah. I got it on my shelf. Yeah. But uh, Jesse was the reason why I even got that book. Actually, as a matter of fact, they reviewed it on, on fucking Tedious back in like 2014. Or 15. Anyway, TRS is just racist SJWs, dude. That's all they really are. And I don't even think, like, I don't know, man. That's What do they really, what is, yeah, they're not even like this social justice or like warrior-ish. I mean, like, what did they really accomplish? What did NJP accomplish? Nothing. What has TRS done? Nothing. And for Jesse to say that he, you know, didn't hitch his cart to the NJP, bullshit, dude. We have many, 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 many. Many times he said, the only choice is NJP, get vetted. What was, was there a gun to your head? No. It was your fucking you saw that agent. quote. Yeah, I saw that in the Daily Rate because somebody sent me that article uh, mm -hmm. earlier today. And uh, uh, the Daily Rate guy was like, well, this doesn't really match up with what you said uh, in the past, mm -hmm. that you knew it was all bullshit and you were waiting for it to fail. But you were promoting it and saying get involved. Um which is a fair point to make, I think. Um, so, and then Jesse kind of, if you listen to it earlier, so he kind of shifts and then uh, he's like, uh, well, I always knew it was going to fail this and that. And then later on he said, well, I was trying to promote it and this and that. So I don't know. It's a little, uh, it's full of shit. 
Yeah, that could be, <laughs> could be the way. That could be the way. To put it. Yeah. Bro, the guy. Look, I've known the guy for for the better part of a decade, seven years. My best friend. Okay. Spent many nights. My family and his family spent many nights in the same places together. Like our kids were best friends, right? Um, he does this. I've seen him do it to other people. And I was like, well, he can like, I don't know. It was like one of those, he could never do that to me. We're too good of friends. You know, we have to, we used to always say like we first, when we first became friends, we talked about Sandy Hook. And one of the things he used to tell me is that he had like, not a pro, what, what do you get when you go to a funeral? I guess it's a program. What is it called? I mean, yeah. Um, I don't program. Know. Pistachio. It's a program. Oh, God, not pistachio girl. <laughs> Pistachio girl. Ice cold there. Yeah, yeah. And her politics guy. Oh, God. We can get into them too later if you want. That's <laughs> yeah, their sure. MJP. Yeah, why not? Alfred Alfer? Oof. I'm sorry, dude, but like if you're white, if, if if you're trying to do a serious politics as a white nationalist and you're a Nazi and you're like, you know, everything's about trad and uh, family values, if the girl you're dating used to do necro furry anime, like I don't know that I'd want that skeleton in my wife's closet if she did videos of herself doing black metal run around the woods butt naked and like sacrificing a goat I did it's not that. something i'd want if i was the leader i'm sorry dude i just got like that's wow she does have some big know. ass titties though i will say those are some huge all right some you know she cans. stayed at my apartment in berkeley for three days right no yeah when she was doing her uh I don't know what she was doing. She was going to go bang baked Alaska or something. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, she, was going, she was going out to California to hang out with Baked Alaska, found out Baked Alaska was getting paid by Joe Bernstein. Oh, my God, he's getting paid by a Jew. So, um, so she decided, she's like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. What am I going to do? I'm like, well, you can crash on my couch. So she crashed on my couch for three days. Um, we had a pool party, like the, the Bay Aryan guys. Had a meetup. Oh my God! Uh, uh, Emily Yukis is here. Emily Yukis is in town, and one of her biggest fans was there, and she ended up going back to his hotel. And then for the next two days, she was like very, very ill on my couch, mm. as as if she had. I don't want to say anything, but I have seen what happens to women after they take Plan B. Get a little sick. Yeah, I've seen. That. Yeah. I've seen that. I've heard of that happening. I, I've, I've heard of that it. happening. I've heard. <laughs> I've heard stories. But that's what Jeff three days, and it was just funny because the next time I saw her, she was married to Warren, and they had a baby, and she was like, "Oh my God, you're Johnny Monoxide." I'm like, "Bitch, you slept on my couch for three days." She pretended not to know me in front of her husband right away, or she she, she just didn't remember. How well, do you that's not, even worse. Like, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's even worse that you don't remember that you came to California and spent the night on my couch for three days, hung out with a bunch of my friends. Like we even got I, the day she was there, I, I my Moon Man because you know memes. I got my Moon Man McDonald's figures came in the mail. And we made a little video and she did voices for him. Don't remember none of that. I think it's kind of yeah. Anyway, that's that's Emily, dude, the pistachio girl. But um, how do we get on that? Jesus, I'm sorry. No, I'm fine. I was fine with that diversion. Um, <laughs> she actually was on the show a couple times way back in the day. Um, yeah, she was on uh, my show once, dude, with yeah. Mike. Her and Mike both came on my show. We were talking about. Was it spirit cooking? The thing with that Marina Abramovich witch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. yeah a little spirit cooking. Also, I see a couple super chats. A couple of them are hostile, but uh, Lance said okay. one of them is. Lance says, yeah, no, I, I love that. He said, I'm down for anything. I don't give a fuck. I was like, that's exactly what I love. Uh, Lance says, Johnny, this is so sad. It's time to forgive Sven. Bring Sven on the show and hug it out, is what Lance says. Lance, you've never had a real friend. Fuck off. Your all friends right. are all 14. <laughs> that's true that's true this dude goes to skate parks and gets high with 14 year olds yeah i wouldn't advise that if that's the case um especially at his age he's old enough to be their dad yeah it's not good uh if true i i don't know lance but i, I take i mean yeah i take your word for yeah. it like, I, I don't i mean everything else that i have said that has come out and you will continue to hear i've been correct i have no reason to lie folks I do appreciate his super chat stuff. He wants to refute it through super chats. Feel free. And yeah, absolutely, he can continue to do so. Help my buddy, my buddy Ralph. Yeah. yeah By the yeah, way, yeah, Ralph, I, I forgot to, to tell you. Go ahead. I forgot to tell you since you got on. You lost a lot of weight, dude. Thank you. Yeah, I've lost Look about good, ninety-five pounds plus. Uh, Holy yeah. shit! You lost the whole Tony Hoveter. Yes, I yes I did. So I had a certain event happen uh, in late April that kind of motivated me. I won't go into that because I can't it's really. Understandable. Yeah, right, right. yeah. You know. Uh, I got you. You, uh, you may have heard a little something about it, but anyway, uh, you I did. did. Yeah, everybody did. Yeah, it's a, but anyway, you know, I hear everything, Ralph. I hear yeah. everything. 
yeah, yeah. So uh, that thing happened, and I said, well, I might have to get back out there, and I want to live longer than uh, than certain people as well, although not that necessarily. Anyway, um, but uh, yes, yeah, so I lost a bunch of weight, and uh, it suited me well, uh, definitely with getting back out there. Um, so, uh, okay, so then Antonio says, and then, look, I don't know anything about this. Oh, Antonio, this fucking brown Lebanese bold fag. All right, go ahead. He says, you can't mock people for being cokeheads when you're one yourself. And then he said, seller too, which means you probably made some money because coke dealers, most coke dealers. I sold I cocaine to strippers. I got arrested for this, Ralph. I sold really? cocaine to strippers. Yeah. Back in 1994. Damn. Yeah. I was banging strippers for, with coke back in 94, Antonio. Shut the fuck up. I haven't touched drugs in fucking almost 30 years, you fucking faggot. Like those, oh, you can't think. These people, this team, you're terrible at A-logging, dude. Just stop. All right. I don't want to talk to him. Sorry, I'm okay. talking around. No, that's okay. Right. Uh, no, 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 no. Keep, by all means, guys, by all means, keep giving Ralph money, though. It's fine. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I'll, re I'll read them out. By the way, they said Rumble's yeah. fucking up, so we'll see if it's... Uh, let me know if it's going well. Sometimes Rumble has this little glitch thing, but uh, let's just pray it doesn't go down, uh, because that was a problem uh, during a lot Wait. of the day. But uh, just let me know if it's, if it's messing up. Let's see here. Uh, also, just small hiccups. Okay, okay, not that bad, Jacuzzi says. Also, we have the backup channel, which for some reason on Rumble seems to work um, better throughout the hiccups. So if, if you do, if it does go down, uh, check it there. There's the backup channel as well. Uh, Ralph should probably use a rubber. Well, I won't get into that uh, chatter, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> also, here, here goes another super chat. Uh, Antonio, okay, more Antonio. Uh, he says he's also friends with a, a Jewish named Alt Skull. That's kind of a cool name, though. He says, it and is, his, it is. It is. Isn't it? Yeah. And his it's very cool name. Yeah. And he said something about your wife. I won't repeat that part. That was a little. Yeah. No. See, this, that's fine. It's fine. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. Um, Alt Skull is, a, yeah, Alt Skull is admittedly a quarter Jewish on his father's side. So not even a right of return to Israel. Um, Tony Hover's wife is half Jewish. Mike's. Mike Fried, uh, Mike Friedman, Mike Panovich's wife was fully Jewish, and uh, Jesse's just a spiritual Jew. So, I yeah, and mean, Jesse, my I don't... friend, yes, my friend is a quarter Jewish. I'm sorry. Oh no. Also, uh, there's a point where um, Jesse says something about Mike. He mentions the uh, half Jew or whatever. He says half Jew wife, but I thought she was fully <laughs> Jew. Uh, no, when he says half Jew wife, he's talking about Hoveder. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Now let me clear the air on that. Tony's wife is half, yes, Tony's Hovillers wife is half Jewish. That's when he says, when he says a bum who with the koi pond, with the fish yeah, up yeah. the road, a bum who's the wheelchair, that's Stryker, obviously Mike and Stryker, the bum with the big forehead, that's Warren, the salesman, okay. and the bum with the Jew, half Jew wife is Hovater. He's talking about NJP. Okay. Yeah. See, I, I didn't know Hovater had the half yeah. Jew wife. So Tony's like, wife take a is shot half Mike? Jewish. Okay. Yes. No, All right. That no. makes more sense because I was kind of stunned. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I was like, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Now let's see. We have some more clips here. So we did the COVID one. Uh, Sven kicks out PN. Sven says Johnny targets his family and he kicked PN out of TR. Now, who is PN? I don't think I know that person. The Paranormies. That's the oh, Paranormies. Paranormies. Okay. Yeah, I do know Paranormies. Um, all right. Uh, I'll play that one. It's a little bit longer. Uh, so we'll both in. Which one is that? The 10? Yeah, it's, oh, Sven yeah. kicks up here and it's three minutes, 31 seconds. Mm. Do you see it? Do you, I mean, it's, I can give you the TLDL. Sure, is, is okay, that's that fine. Hoverter, well, no, he, actually, this is the one where he, tell, he talks about how Hoverter and everybody wanted me gone. He wanted me gone because because my, my flat earth and other schizo Bigfoot posting is making the NJP look illegitimate. It's not a legitimate thing when you guys have a flat earth guy around. Hey, just for the record, you guys, uh, Tucker Carlson just said he's not averse to listening to the flat earth theory. Really? So, yeah, yeah. I'll Actually, let me read exactly what was said. All right, go ahead. Uh, it said, Tucker Carlson's descent into pushing conspiracies hit a scientific new low as he suggested in a new interview, excuse me, that he's open to the flat earth theory. That was on Rolling Stone. So, Very cool. All right, now we don't. I think we did a flat earth debate a while back. We might have to revi revive that. Uh, sure. So you want me to skip that one and play the next one? Uh, I mean, the next the next one is Sven wishes. I kind of want to play that one honestly. Sven, Sven wishes he could no, because that yeah. Sven Sven says all the the means. He says he calls my oh. son a faggot. Calls oh me really? Why? Yeah. 
Oh, he's doing the thing where he's like, I just want to, you know, give Johnny a hug. I want to see Johnny. I want to see his stupid fat wife and his stupid faggot son and his stupid daughter. Like, that's, you know, that's he's doing the, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's, yeah. It's a bit. It's a fucking bit. So he can talk like, more but, shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And now it's like, an, oh, dude, dude, monoxide, the wife is fat and his son's a fag. Ah! Yeah. None of you people would ever say none of that shit to my face, so fuck off. Uh, also, we have 850 or so live now uh, on the show. Nice. Pa Powerchat.live slash the Rafferty if you want to send in a super chat or hate chat, whatever. Uh, Rumble rants as well. All oh. the other options are there too. Um, um, go ahead. I just got a correction on Tony's wife from uh, an actual Jew. Uh, Tony's wife is fully Jewish by Jewish law. Really? Yes. If the now, mother is Jewish, you're fully Jewish by Jewish law. Yeah, yeah that's what I, that's my understanding too. But what? Yeah, so, so Tony's kids are full Jew. So how does he reconcile that? He doesn't because he's a phony, fraudulent fuck whose best friend is a half a Jew. Vasily is half Jewish. Now, really? That guy too. So yeah. I didn't know that guy until earlier. He was mentioned, but. Yep. So he paid for me when I went to the when I went to Tierra Slovenia out in California and I shared a hotel room with Larry Ridgway, by the way. I <laughs> shared a hotel rooms with Larry Ridgway at three different TRS events. He's the best fucking roommate ever. Um but yeah, Vasily paid for me with his mom's sky miles. Okay. Not not with cash. He paid with his mom's sky miles to fly me out to California. So this big donor is just a dude who's got like mommy's credit card. Now Give us a little background on Tony Hovater because we talked about most okay. of the other people on the show and we covered him a little bit when uh, Stryker got pushed out and then like uh, less mm -hmm. than two weeks later, they, they got rid of Tony, which yeah. not very good strategic decision. Okay, give us the background on Tony Hovater. Okay, Tony Hovater was originally uh, some little conservative derp nerd, little skinny fat Republican. That's all I can tell from, the, from the, the pictures when he was trying to do like politics in high school or something. But then he somehow ended up with TWP. And he's one of the TWP refugees, right? Um, and that's how he came around. Uh, how he came into being with, with TRS, I think he came along with Stryker in that deal because they were both TWP refugees, right? And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, after the box broke and all that. Um, so he had, I didn't really hear him. I just knew about him. And I knew he'd just gotten seriously doxxed. Well, do you know how he got seriously doxxed? I do not. He had a New York Times journalist live with him for a week. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a good idea. You think, you think Christopher Cantwell's an idiot for bringing L. Reeve with him on, at Charlottesville? This nigger had a fucking New, New York slime writer living with him. He's, and the article was called The Nazi Next Door. And how he was a nice boy and all this stuff. Dude, are you fucking kidding me? Okay, so his father is military industrial complex. Uh, this is where I go paranormies on Tony Hover, real quick. Uh, he's got first of all, he's got Michael Aquino's eyebrows. He might be Michael Aquino's moon child. I'm not sure, but um, <laughs> for real though, his dad is military industrial complex, which puts him into the same rank as a Frank Zappa or Jim Morrison, whose parents were also military industrial complex and were put into social movements to make change. So uh, the CIA engineered Laurel Canyon, which was the hippie movement. They they engineered. Uh, the punk movement, they used guys like Henry Rollins to do that. Um, he was a nerd from Dartmouth before he came out to California. Uh, he'd never even heard punk music before he got out there. Uh, with uh, the, the Grateful Dead, Phil Lesh was a CIA plant. So, you know, in all these music scenes, you have, and you have in the Nazi movement, you have Frank Cullen, who was the head of, what is it, the Chicago Nazi party or whatever it was. Frank Cullen was actually Frank Cohen, who is actually now Frank Joseph, who writes esoteric books for Barnes Review. Uh, so... Tony Hoverter could be the Fed. If anybody could be the Fed, it could be Tony Hoverter. Maybe he's just, you know, maybe he's, maybe he's not. Maybe he's just a loser, piece of shit waiter who is just uh, too weak to get a job. But he got TRS when he got doxxed. TRS put up a GoFundMe for him and got him, like, I don't remember if it was 20 or 40, but it was a multiple of $20,000 as a fucking GoFundMe thing. And... Next thing you know, Tony Hoverter is the head of a pool party in Ohio, and then pretty soon after that, he's the pool party leader for everybody. He's like the pool party coordinator after the J.O. disappeared, Tony Hoverter took over. And then when NJP was founded, he was part of the, you know, he was one of the founders. Uh, come to find out, there was a pre-party before NJP. I found this out recently. There was a meeting with some people, 
Uh, one of them being the guy who told me this. Uh, and then some other ones, Tony Hoveter, and a couple others, one of them being Richard Spencer. And they were meeting up to talk about a, forming a political party. And the guy, one of the, one of the guy who, who told me all this said he saw a car near their Airbnb that looked like a Fed's car. He mentioned it to Tony. Tony got really weird about it. And then this guy set up uh, when another guy, excuse me, this guy, this other guy set up the uh, Tony was part of this work program where uh, a guy had gotten like 10 or 12 guys jobs. Like, remember when people were getting doxxed and you couldn't get a job because you've been doxxed? Yeah. Right? When they went out after Charlottesville and stuff. Yeah, like me. Um, this guy was setting up dox proof jobs for guys. And he had a machine shop in Ohio where he had like 12 or 14 guys. Maybe not that many. I think it might have been 12 at the high point. But uh, he got them all jobs, good jobs, right? And he bought a couple trailers in a trailer park, and they were all living together. And these were guys who had you know, needed help and whatever. This guy was, you know, uh, helping everybody out. He got Tony a job, you know. And one by one, Tony started this little cult of personality around him. And those, some of those guys became part of TW, or, uh, the NJP. Then Tony quit his job to, be, to work full-time for NJP, and to which he actually recently was apparently getting $6,000 a month in salary. Six grand? Six grand a month to do what, Tony? Apparently, he was flying around. He took some European vacations. Uh, he went to see the uh, what's the famous diner from the stupid show that that all the fucking hipsters love? Um, not Star Trek. Uh, the other hipster show about the woods in Washington or something. Twin Peaks. Oh yeah, Twin Peaks. A, it, oh, yeah, is that where the meme comes? Because I saw some comments and they're like, "Well, at least if they're going to go on these European vacations, they should take the pictures so that we can see." So that we could see. Yeah, and one of the pay pigs was like, this yeah, is what yeah. we're paying for. Bro, there's a guy in my yeah. paranormies chat right now who showed us his button. Is he, he pays $100 a month. And he's been doing it for two and a half years. Pays these guys 100 bucks a month. Right? Imagine having a bunch of people doing that just, just so you could do drinking buddy nationalism. So you could have a few parties where you get to hang out in McKevick and set up a threesome with his wife. Um, or, you know, jazz hens can try to pull a gun on you or you know uh like or or mike can fuck one of the other guy's wives now wait wait you know? wait whoa, whoa, whoa. what happened there oh, hold on let's that stop was, it that was at that was before that was at an npi event that was the npi event where conti and spencer broke up oh yeah i've heard about that but i didn't realize yeah. enoch was getting oh. down like that enoch what enoch had banged the guy was producer kenny he produced the uh he was the co-host with demarcus demarcus Leibowitz, the black jew uh <laughs> Wait, 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 Demarcus Lieber. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, he's one of he's one of the old TRS guys. He's one of the old TRS guys. Okay. They had a podcast called Intersectional Alt Right, and okay. producer Kenny, his wife, put Kenny in jail. For, I guess they like to have rough sex. He choked her. Then they got into an argument. She called the cops. There were bruises. He got five years. Anyway, Mike fucked her the night before the NPI thing. Like this, Mike's fucking other dudes' wives here. Like while well, the dudes in jail. So yeah, that happened. Well, some of these people the might see that as an honor, Johnny. I don't know. Uh, some, some of these guys, I don't know. They're so deep into the sauce. They might see that as an honor. Uh, it Mike. might be like, yeah. I mean, well, the guys that were talking about McKevitt having a threesome, they're like, oh, you're just jealous. You're just jealous. You're just jealous. I'm like, bro, if you're if you're doing a political party that is is uh, that does things like white Christmas where you're getting presents for Christmas for families, underprivileged fam white families. And your whole point of the evergreen thing is about families and women and, you know, family stuff and the women's auxiliary and whatever. And that's trad this and trad that threesomes aren't trad, bro. You know, it's not trad to come out of the bathroom and seeing your, seeing your wife of your four twins, two sets of twins making out with some other broad. That's not trad. And if it is, I mean, if that's what you want to do, that's cool. But you can't be the leader. In a, there you go. We have a we have a political party. We have a fake political party with no political power having sex scandals. Holy shit! Yeah, I mean, if you want to do that sort of thing, yeah, whatever. Obviously, I wouldn't be the one to judge. But um, right, but you, like, can't you can't be lead a yeah. trad political party, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, also, I see another hate super chat. Why did you? I don't know who Curtis is, but why did you get BTFO by Curtis? I don't know what that means, but oh Jesus Christ! Do you, okay, out. yeah, that's that's Lance and yeah, whatever. They're all friends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now back to back to the narrative on on NJP though. Um, you were talking about the precursor discussions there, uh, precursor party. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, so and that got he my my buddy walked away from that because of the Fed thing. 
because of the car and the way Tony acted about it. And okay, so the guy who set up the jobs thing, one day he asked Tony about, somebody said something about feds. And he asked him, I don't know why, Tony, when was the last time you talked to the feds? And Tony got really upset about it. Like, you know how when somebody's lying or hiding something and they get mad? Yeah. Yeah, like that. They get mad when you bring it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they kind of get yeah. So that's Tony. Uh, Tony was the one who didn't like my conspiracy theory stuff. He was the one who is talking about people being extremely online. He's dry. His humor is very dry. In his interview with the New York Times people, he said he loves Seinfeld. Um, so that's his like, really, bro? How can you be a Nazi and love that Jew show? But uh, I'm mean, just like so many hypocritical things with these people. Uh, I guess that's the thing. Like, don't be hypocritical challenge impossible. But um, how about not having a Jew wife and JP challenge impossible? <laughs> um, you know, Jesus, man. It's like, I don't know. I was right the whole fucking time. <laughs> it's weird. The schizo was right. Now, you were still there when they started NJP, right? I was still part of it. I was still on the network. I was not involved. Right. I was talking about it. I talked to them about it. I'm like, you guys understand. I told Mike, I was like, you guys do understand that you're going to have to give me some sort of a thing to do. You know, because if we're going to do this as a network, if we're going to be part of, you know, if we're going to help promote this thing, if we're going to make it work, because I thought at, at, at the beginning, everybody wanted to make it work. I was like, okay, you guys want to do this stupid thing. Okay, sure. We'll see what happens. You know, get a little grassroots thing. Maybe be a little grassroots fucking, you know, it, it cause cause some spoilers in some local elections. Maybe get a fucking, get a uh, state representative elected or something. Get on, get some people on school boards. Do some good shit for school boards. You know, I was like, all right, that sounds good. Yeah, that's, you know. And of course, Mike doing the speech and Mike does some good speeches sometimes. And I was at the inaugural one. And it sounded like a good idea. And I was like, well, you know, you guys, you're all right. And nobody ever spoke to me about it again. Like I wasn't invited to stuff. Uh, I had to find out about stuff third hand. It was like they were keeping it from me. Tony didn't want me around it. Because whenever I show up, it's a Johnny party. Everybody, It's like a circle around Johnny, and they want to talk to me about Flat Earth and trannies and Bigfoot and aliens and shit, right? Because I'm a fun guy. I asked Larry who his favorite person ever at TRS was. He got into a fight with J.O. when they were roommates together over Bigfoot. Because Joe didn't believe in Bigfoot. And Larry slammed and broke the door and said, <laughs> Johnny's my favorite fucking guy. And I was like, that was one of them. And Larry and I were best friends ever since. No, but uh, like, it, it, that's the problem that these people have with me is that they want people to hate me. And the people that actually know me have a hard time hating me because they know me. You know? It's like, I gotta hate. John. Like, when, Je when you listen to Jesse's talk about, like, oh, what he did was so bad, what Johnny did was so bad. Dude, I didn't do none of that shit. I was just cool with it. <laughs> you know, because you're a fucking piece of shit. I was cool with it. I, I'm not going to stop them. You didn't stop them from doing this shit to me. So fair is fair. You know, and you turned on me first, cunt. Um, and I'll fight him anywhere, anytime. One-on-one, -on -one, me and him. Anytime. I don't give a fuck. I'll whoop his skinny fat ass anywhere. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Dude, oh, yeah. Dude, I hate squats. It's because you got a curved spine. <laughs> Some fucking fluoride poisoning. Anyway, Alpha Mania too. Um, we need some of it. We need some matches. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, what the fuck was I saying? Uh, well, we're talking about NJP and kind of oh, the, NJP, the yeah. of that. So they, they they were keeping me out of it because nobody wanted me around. Tony no, Tony didn't want me around. Tony and Vasily didn't want me around. Jazz hands didn't want me around because I say politics are fake and gay. I say if voting changed anything, they'd make it illegal. You know. Uh, I say things like. You know, every all politics is faking. Yes, Donald Trump was the election was stolen. Yes, all this stuff happened. Like the stuff is happening. This, you know, and and it is, whatever. It's fake. It's gay. It's faking gay. Right. Look at the fucking what's his name? The fucking Pennsylvania orc there. The Ashton Kutcher in a mask. What's his name? The giant bald dude, Fetterman. Oh, Fetterman. Like, that's yeah, a real. Yeah. That's a real fucking senator. Get the fuck out of here. That's an actor. I don't or Feinstein. You think she was a real still senator? Alive. Yeah. You think he's a real senator and he's this fucking senator, a politician, and who's a, who does sen senatorial work and can pass legislation, can write legislation? You're a fucking retard. So, like, I, like I can't take any of that shit serious, right? So, they, why would they want me around? So, they, they, but I'm TRS, so they're all my friends. Those people are all my friends personally, but politically, we don't agree, right? So this or sounds like it was a bad idea from the start, though, right? Um, it was a terrible idea from the start, dude. <laughs> because you're I mean, splitting I mean, your internal logo, base. Yeah, their logo was stolen from the most glowy, yeah, infested that. fucking uh, party in the NFD in, in Germany. Like, like 
they wanted to shut it down. Like the other parties, were like, look, we got to shut this party down. And and the government was like, we can't. We have too many guys in there. Like, it's like it's like a KKK meeting where it's like you know twenty guys and sixteen of them are FBI agents. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, seriously, it's it, it's like that. And so they stole the logo from that. Right. Their fucking their their platform that Joe wrote. Oh my God, I, the best. Yeah, Joseph leaving the NJP would be like Christ quitting Christianity at the Last Supper. You know what I mean? He wrote the platform. He created the NJP. He came up with the name, all that stuff. They'd be like Jesus being like, yo, this is nice and all, but I'm going to go back to do building hey, You're talking sheds, about Striker, right? by the way, right? Get, that's his name. That's what I'm saying. But like, yeah. no, it, that, you know what I mean? I just clarified you know I mean? for That'd the audience like, that didn't know. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we're talking about Striker. Like him yeah. leaving NJP would be like Jesus leaving Christianity. Like, come on. He invented it. Like that's why I, I hate the guy. I want I don't I want nothing to do with him. He's a de degenerate little fuck who tried to give my kid booze like twelve times after being told not to. Like you're not my kid's uncle, faggot. Um, like he, him, he that's his. I can't say anything. I can't take that away from him. It was his invention. It was his baby. He wrote the platform. All that fucking poor fag revenge porn. <laughs> their platform is. It's literally he wrote every single word of it. Okay. And it's his baby. And Tony pushed him out because, yes, his big donors don't like him. His big Tony's big donors think he's a loudmouth, you know, who gets drunk and ends up in a wife beat. He does. Everybody knows Joe that knows that's what he does, right? Everybody knows him knows that. But like the big donors, like he can't be serious politically and do that. But it's his, you know. So much like Evergreen, which was created by Wolfie, which is Coach Finstock's wife of the Manor Bund. And uh, Allison McKevitt of the McKevitts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they created Evergreen. And Sven and Allison pushed Wolfie out. And then they pushed the McKevitts out because threesomes. So, like, the whole thing, bro, the whole thing. Dude, this is like a Hanukkah miracle. Like, really, you know, for these Jews. Like, oh, by the way, uh, Rabbi Ralph, uh, <laughs> I was supposed to tell you something. Fuck. Really? God damn it. Yeah, well, I, got a, I got a bunch of shout outs I got to do later, but yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, now, let me ask you. <laughs> let me ask you the. Um, it was in said in love. It was in love. No, I know, I know, I know, I know, no, 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 I didn't take I it know. personally. Yeah, no, I. Oh no, of course they, no, they posted it. They posted the picture of the of the of the uh, the Yarmaluk with the kill, with the K on it, and I was like, ah, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> now let me ask you. Um, so Stryker, they kind of pushed him out, or he quit, or whatever. Uh, and then it was Mike and Tony. It went from Mike and Strike to Mike and Tony. Uh, mm -hmm. as a lot of people were bitching about that. And then within, I think it was within 10 days. I don't even think it was a full two weeks. They had pushed out Tony, got rid of him. Now he's taken yeah. over, commandeered the, the telegram, uh, channel, yeah. which it's his, right? So they could never get it back. Um, I don't know. This, this doesn't seem like very good strategy, uh, Johnny to, to have done that. No, no, I, I like, I don't understand what he's doing. No, he's like. And this is his, okay, there used to be on Telegram a channel called NJP Exposed. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, kn I know that channel well, actually. Where they would lampoon, they would lampoon NJP, right? Ah, ha, 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 ha. It's just doing an irony, right? Mm -hmm. Just doing an irony. No, it's not an irony. It's Tony Hoveter, and that's his, that's his humor. So now he's doing that on the Telegram thing, where the like, Chairman yes. Jesse will lead us the way. Like, and he's just like, he's, 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 leaking, uh, he's leaking VMs from Mike. Like, yep. you know, confidential VMs that they, where they were talking about firing Warren. Uh, Jesse wanted to cut Warren's pay. Everything with Jesse's about money. Everything with Jesse's about money. Remember when I was talking to um, uh, Mr. Wanglin last time I was on, and he I asked do. me what I thought. And I said, and I said, I thought that these guys just want a fucking job until, because they wanted a fake job and they don't have to work. Remember I said that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Jesse says those exact he words. He said that verbatim last night. Yeah. That they fucked yep. up his fake job. Yeah. Uh, that's I didn't call it or anything, but I did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he said that verbatim, uh, and he also was, was mad that Tony was taking money away from him too. And he said his subscribers yeah. had dropped since NJP and uh, not much, though, not much because they only ended up with 600 of NJP subs <laughs> total 600, 600 paying supporters, dude. That's it. In three years, if I was a paying supporter, I'd be pissed because the money that they squandered. Jared Howe did a thing where he, he talks about how much money at, that they, they should have, they probably took in and how many man hours were wasted, volunteer hours were wasted. And all they got was five little shitty protests out of it. And it was like, it ended up being like $750,000 of protest or something. Um, how much do you think they yeah. raised total? Um, so I've seen a some lot. people, a lot. well, I've seen some people and they said, well, Tony's not like, you know, 
uh, leaking anything about the money or, or anything like. And again, I'm not saying that they did anything. I'm trying to be a, a little neutral at least. But um, he's trying to. Well, apparently, he's still trying to shake Mike down. I, I mean, I have, I have a very schizo theory on on top of the whole thing. But it's just the whole the whole thing is being sunsetted, and now this entire op is just a big demoralization op to just get everybody. <laughs> on the whole white nationalism is always going to be bad, you know? So I don't know. I, I think there's, there, there's feds involved. There are, there are feds involved. It's the biggest fucking white nationalist group, you know, even though it's tiny, even though like they're, they are ultra niche, equal, my micro e celebs, you know, I'm ultra, ultra niche. You're like in between. No, you're a little yeah, bit. yeah. I'm, I'm in between. I think that's fair. Sir. Um, yeah. but uh, how much do you, <laughs> How much, by the way, that was funny. We were listening to the clip, and then Rand's just enraged because uh, you know I'm still cool with Larry, and Dingo comes on here yeah. once in a while oh, too, yeah. and yeah. and he just gets insanely mad about it. And Jesse's just like, "Well, chill, Ralph's an East celeb. <laughs> That's why they want to talk to. Him. That's not true, by the way. Uh, but right. uh, I know for sure. But uh, especially Larry's just been cool with me uh, through everything. There were some times where it didn't look like I was going to be an East celeb <laughs> much longer, uh, <laughs> and he was still yeah. he was still, including we're a this year. For a second, Ralph, we're a little weird for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's not the case, but I, I, I did chuckle at that uh, at that description. H how much do you think that they raised total? Um, it's in the millions. That's astonishing to me. I had no idea that they were raising that much money. It, it is. I mean, overall, you got to remember there were Bitcoin whales. There were, uh, you know, there was all kind. There was all kinds of donors. There was cash. Uh, anytime they went anywhere, people always gave Mike an envelope. Like, you know what I mean? There was there were donations. I don't remember the guy's name, but he was one of Richard Spencer's backers. And uh, it was back when TRS first started, they were just libertarians. And he was friends with Richard or trying to be friends with Richard or whatever. And he wanted some of the Richard, you know, the money he was getting, some of the Radix money and whatever. Mm -hmm. And he went to this guy and he was like, well, these guys don't like libertarians. You're going to have to do something, you know, more radical and so mike that's when mike shifted from libertarianism to more radical politics because money because money um but then of course oh i heard something today uh somebody told me you know how everybody's trying to say oh all this stuff about mike being a jews is bullshit and it's all hearsay and blah 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 blah, blah. and mike saying you know even when i'm around other jews and you know like uh, in, in my case when he's talking about jews in my ca in edge cases in my case like that kind of stuff and it's just all out of context even when the people hear the context and it's in context this to me is more definitive proof. Have you ever heard of a guy in New York City getting a job as a high level coder making six figures who doesn't know how to code? That's no. a Jewish gift job. <laughs> yeah, I've not heard of that. Um, That's what I'm saying. Mike says there's in the leaked when Hover when he the, uh, he doesn't know how to code. He says he doesn't I know how to code. That. I heard that yeah. today. So yeah. so so he obviously listens when I say that his website looks like a fourth grader's uh, uh, computer science project. Yeah, he listens when I say that. Because um, it does. It looks like shit, dude. You guys are taking all this money. You guys are like Michael Brown's parents, okay? Michael <laughs> Brown's parents still haven't put a fucking gravestone on that nigger's grave, okay? But they've, still, but, they've, but they've sold so many white tees with his face on it. They're billionaires almost, right? You guys are the same. You haven't fixed your website. You're taking in all this money. I don't take in any money. I spent donations that I could have used to... I don't know. They're not a lot. I could have bought a guitar, right? I, I couldn't buy 12 of them, Jesse. But uh, I, I took that money and I, I fixed my website because I want to give my listeners a great product and something cool to look at while they're listening to my stuff. Uh, yeah. So, you know, what? so like you guys took in hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars. Like <clears throat> if they were making at their peak, if they had 5,000 subscribers at their peak before NJP, when they were like, when people were like, you know, when they were paying me, dude, they paid me after I was, when I was only doing paranormies. They stopped paying me after, I mean, they, I told Jesse to stop paying me. I, when I wanted to get off the network, I made him stop paying me. They were paying me anyways, dude. I wasn't even making paywall content. They were paying me because my content actually brought in listeners. Because my shit is fun to listen to. Well, I, so I know paid me a lot of that. people like that uh, who who love yeah. your show, and it draws more people in. You said it earlier. If you talk about Jews twenty four seven, nothing else. Um, I mean, there's an audience for that, but it's uh, it's siloed, right? Uh, it's it's hard to to break out and bring in new people who may 
listen to some of that stuff, right? If they were brought in, but there has to be something uh, there to, to right. get them in in the first place, right? That's what I'm saying. And oh, and Jesse's going to say, oh, I made Chateau Ortiz to all my parody songs. I did more for the white That's race so than good. anybody. Dude, your fucking parody songs suck, dude. Nobody gives a shit. You write parodies of songs nobody likes, okay? The, on about shit nobody cares about. Right? He wrote. He took a Tool song. I love this song. And he made a song about anime. He took Anima and turned it into anime. You have to really, really pay attention to the lyrics to even know what the fuck he's talking about. It's cool that you can make overproduced, you know, exact replicas of the song with some other lyrics and nobody understands half of them. But that's not like Weird Al does good parodies, right? Weird Al, Weird Al, that's what he does. Weird Al's awesome. You're not Weird Al. Knock it off. Uh, by he's the way, he's. He, Oh, he's oh, I'm sorry, but Mike said that uh, that Tony was having a case of uh, main character syndrome. Jesse like lives main character syndrome twenty four seven. He's a, he's like a lead guitar player. He is he's like a lead guitar player of a failed band. He's like the band's still gonna make it. He just wants to be a rock star. That's all it is, you know, not work. He wants to play his guitars, smoke cigars. He told me this stuff. I want to play my guitar and smoke cigars and drink scotch and hang out with my friends, hang out with you, Johnny. That's what he used to tell me. By the way, we have a super chat here. Uh, J Doge Medic says Johnny has clearly read weird scenes inside the canyon. He's up on all the subversion with the military industrial complex. He says it's spoopy. Absolutely, bro. I have not just read Dave McGowan stuff. I got to speak to him before he died. Uh, I love I love that guy's stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot. Um, I believe next season I'm gonna do a very deep dive on the CIA's um, invention of all the scenes. I think it might be this. This year's scene was cults, and I wonder why. But uh, <laughs> nice, nice conclusion, though, with the collapsing of a cult. This is like a great Christmas present for me, dude. Like, honestly, I couldn't have asked for anything better. Now let's, uh, but, but uh, yeah, we're gonna do next year. We're gonna do next ahead, year. Bro. We'll do the uh, the CIA involvement, the, the military industrial complex involvement, and all the scenes. Now, I want to ask you about the cult thing here in a second, but I see Larry Ridgway in the chat who could pop in too if he wants. He says, I never he says I never got paid. He said I got paid fifty bucks per bit I wrote for FTM, which is Fascination. Um yep. is what he said there in the chat. Now, the cult thing, I, I've seen that thrown around. Um why would you say it's a cult? Of course we just watch the Rand way lot, so <laughs> but yeah, but go ahead. <laughs> I mean you could, yeah, you could just watch Rand. But like the way the, <laughs> The way that we call them NJPCs, right? They're people, the uh, the cult of TRS NJP, um, which, by the way, I coined both of those. So, uh, but the, the NJPC is somebody who will spit the party lines and uh, argue with you to the death and call you a schizo, uh, you know, if you say anything different. And they get so mad, their deal was, well, who else can I give money to to help the white race? If that's your answer for stuff, you're 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 not helping, Ralph. You know what I mean? Not you, Ralph, but like you know, Ralph. I'm helping, but uh, <laughs> Ralph Wiggum. But yeah, um, dude, yes, yes. But like you're not helping, bro. You know, you're giving ten bucks a month to these people. You're not. You're just helping them pay their fucking mortgage, really. You know, like. But it was a fake political party to begin with. Um, could they come out and say it? It was a grift to begin with. And then Mike, oh my God, there's this one. They were Mike on the on the show on Friday. I think he's like, oh yeah, there's so many people are taking the chairman shit way too far. <laughs> like, bro, you mean like the thing that you have on your business card that says chairman? The thing that says the chairman circle five hundred dollars a month? The thing where they call you the chairman constantly when you get up and they, they people chant chairman, chairman. Uh, people talk about the idiots like John Fashcroft talk about how cool it was to see kids throwing Romans to Uncle Mike, the chairman. <laughs> you fucking kidding me? You fucking retard. Oh, they were taking it too far. Why was that, Mike? Why do you think they were taking it too far, Mike? Because you're a fucking nerd who's never been anything in your entire life, and now you have friends that they're not your friends. Because the ones that all the big, strong guys you think are the, are the chads, you feel weak in front of them because you are weak, okay? That's why you want to hang out online with Borzoi and laugh about books and shit because you're a fucking nerd. Now I see um, uh, a comment in chat. Did Mox, uh, Monoxide confirm the shotgun or the shooting slash shotgun claim over Flat Earth? Well, we went into that uh, a little bit earlier. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's true or not, but he said his wife stopped. It wasn't a shotgun. He went out to, to his car to get a, a weapon of some sort. I'm assuming it's a gun. If you had to go to his car, a knife you carry in your pocket. I mean, I'm a man. I put a knife in my pocket every morning when I get up. Uh, Who doesn't carry a knife? Now here's a here's a, cr a critical uh, regular chatter. Uh, what is that? Could 
Klitzer, Klitzer 85. I don't know if that means he was born in 85, but I was. He says, Johnny was shit-faced drunk during his shows and should have been kicked off TRS years before he was. Once he didn't realize that no one else on the stream could hear him for 45 minutes. I've certainly never done anything like that, uh, if that's true. I, but, <laughs> but go ahead if you want. This guy, this guy clearly has no idea what he's talking about, but whatever, dude. All right. Uh, it's cool. You can you can pay you can pay Ralph and lie. It's fine. <laughs> now, um, okay. So, what about the delineation or, or the attempted delineation between uh, NJP and, and TRS? So, you, so you heard uh, Jesse on the on the ranch stream, and he he said, "Well, TRS is, is still is still strong. It's it's never been better. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But NJP yeah, yeah, is yeah. dead, and so he's trying to split that off. Do you see a delineation there? No, you can't at this point because Mike is TRS and Mike is NJP. So you can't. Um, so there's that. And also the fact that it's like they hitched the wagon to it from the beginning. I mean, like, like for the past two and a half years on their video stream, they've had NJP banners all around them. Get vetted. It's time to join the NJP. Do the thing. You can't walk that shit back. People have that recorded, dude. Like <laughs> you just can't. That pan Pandora's out of the box. The smoke's been let out of it, you know? So. All right, now, uh, if you want to send in any questions, you can use Rumble Rants, PowerChat.live, slash the Ralph Retort, all that stuff. I'll do that again. Um, so I, I, I don't know if you heard Rand, but he said, well, I'm, I'm just waiting on the next thing, uh, and, and I'll jump in on that because he has to grift off something, right? Um, do you think that they're going to try anything else? They're talking about going back to pool parties and, and, and all mm. this stuff. Yeah, good luck with that. Good luck with that. Speaking of... Um, I'm actually wearing the shirt of the Chicago pool party that left the biggest pool party in their network that left. I'm actually wearing the, the gathering t-shirt right now, guys, Kate and Paul and all you guys, Kyle, love you guys. And what, um, did, what did they yeah. leave over? They, 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 all the NJP stuff. They left over the NJP stuff. They were going to like, dude, they, they were not pleased with the way TRS runs their events. Anyways, that's a whole other story, but, uh, they were not down with the whole, you become a supporter or you leave. Right, you're no longer a pool party. You're now a support group for NJP. That's the thing. They merged the support group. Uh, they merged the TR, uh, the NJP supporters with the pool parties, which are their just their little groups of you know for hanging out. Right, the pool, the the hangout groups. Right there, which right. is literally just a racist you know drinking buddy nationalism, basically. Right. Uh, <clears throat> so you know they occasionally get together. It always ends up drinking because these people are fucking retarded. Right. Um, yes, I used to drink heavily many years ago. I don't anymore. I occasionally have a drink now. I don't drink that much anymore. Last time I got shit faced was probably at Rhodes's party back in 2018. But anyhow, um, these these people, there's yeah, there's no way they can separate it now. Too many pool parties have left. The whole Midwest is gone. Florida gone. Uh, Colorado gone. California I'm not sure about, but like like all these groups are gone. People left. Pool party leaders like, dude. When I found out that that strike, when remember Striker threatened to fucking Striker threatened to fucking sue me. Remember that? I do. Yeah. So the Striker threatened us, which is pretty litigious of a Nazi <laughs> who hates Jews, you know. Uh, and then Jesse um, proceeded to, in his pool party leaders group, proceeded to plan on extorting me. Remember that when he was going to try and strong arm me into shutting up. I don't remember that one, but I, I, I tell oh, you where I'm, Oh, you don't remember that? Yeah. No. So there was uh, one of the pool party leaders sent me screenshots of this conversation where Jesse, well, I, uh, I guess a task, if anybody wants it, is to collect information on Johnny so that we can use it in case we have to threaten actual legal stuff because, you know, we don't, we're not really going to do it, but we'll threaten him with it. So we'll kind of shut up and pretend that, oh, shit, I guess he can't. So, yeah, Jesse, I guess, you know, maybe that's why I turned on you so bad. I don't know. You threatened to fucking extort me, you faggot. Um, so, yeah. So these people are, like, criminal from the beginning. So, um, dude, I forgot what I was talking about. Just thinking about that pisses me off. They tried to sue me. Uh, what was I talking about before that? Um... <sighs> I actually forgot too. Uh, no. Well, I they was, tried to sue somebody off. else, and yeah. they used a Jew lawyer, Jonathan Nussbaum. You know, for Nazis, they're awfully surrounded by Jews again and again and again. We have this thing where the white nationalist movement, 1.0, 2.0, all surrounded by Jews. Weird. It's almost like the Jews create the scene on both sides. Oh, I think you were talking uh, Jesse threatening yeah. you, and then Stryker. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Jesse threatening me, and then Stryker. Uh, what do you, 
Jesse didn't threaten me. Jazz hands. Uh, jazz right. hands. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm gonna misspoke. Well, I don't know, dude. The whole it's all fucking retarded. The whole thing is just whatever. <laughs> like, it's a little hard to keep none of them are gonna do anything. Oh no, Jesse was extorting pool me. And yeah, yeah. Jesse extorting bullshit, you. Dude. And we were talking about pool parties. Uh, oh, well, they're yeah. never getting back together, dude. That that shit's gone. You're not getting that shit back. Those people aren't coming back. There are so many people that are so disillusioned with this entire thing. They had a group of people, 20, 30 guys, 25 guys that would hang out. They had wives, some of them, some have kids or kids or friends and all this shit. Well, they can't be a pool party anymore because the pool party leader is no longer vetted, right? They had to re-vet the pool party leaders to make sure they passed Tony's vetting. Make now, sure what is the, the Sony. so I hear that term a lot. I, I know what vetting means, but what is it? mean for them like what what, what is oh, the vetting process? i have no idea you make sure they're not friends with johnny <laughs> basically i'm not even joking like do you believe in flat earth i'm pretty sure that's something they asked <laughs> do you do you follow the paranormies on twitter like what? like dude everything they could do to get rid of me because my show is entertaining and and we talk about stuff they don't like to talk about because it just discredits the movement i think you guys discredit yourselves way more than i could ever do now, by the way, we'll take some callers if people want to call in. I see some people in there now. If you want to talk, raise your hand. I put out the link uh, also in the rum the main Rumble chat. Uh, it's t.me slash the Ralph Retort. If anybody wants to call in, uh, I'm down for that for sure. And I'll see if anybody raises Raise your hand. If you're just listening, that's fine too. Uh, but if you did want to talk, uh, just raise your hand and I'll bring you in. That's one reason uh, I did on Telegram uh, instead of Google Meet. So uh, if you do want to do that, go ahead. Right. Uh, this is a really good, this is very clear. This sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's doing really well today. Um, yeah. Now, is it normally not? <laughs> well, no, it does. Sometimes it'll there might be a glitch or something on Telegram, but it's it's doing good. Yeah, it's doing good today. When it works right. well, it, it works really well. Uh, I'll say, I guess if that makes sense. That sounds like a randism almost. Um, but um, okay, so uh, Mike Enoch, let's go into him just a little bit because he's the sure. focal point, right? He's the he's the main guy, the chairman. He's, uh, yeah, he's the chairman. Yeah. How, uh, <coughs> what's your read on on? where he's trying to go now with it. Um, is Mike? he going to be, yeah, yeah. Is he going to be able to just say, oh, NJP is completely done well, and this and that? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I honestly don't know. What he said was he, the NJP as a political party is done. It was never a political party, dude. It's an LLC. Um, it was never a political party. But anyways, he said that he's going to go back. It's going to be, he's going to be, in charge but in a more supervisory role he never should have had a committee that was bad like all the things you just it was bad and we oh oopsie oopsie whoopsie we made a poopsie like you know like nobody nobody's buying this shit dude i i, I don't know i he's gonna try but if anybody if anybody's like oh mike's just really trying he's really got screwed shut up the guy's got a fucking koi pond okay which he put in with your money now, so, all right, I'm looking through here. Um, some of these comments too. Um, I'm looking at the actually the, the TRS exposed thing. I'm trying to make sure that I cover uh, some points I may uh, have missed here. Of course, they're anti TRS. If anybody pro TRS wants to call in, I'm fine with that too, um, and would be more than fine with it actually. Um, now, what about McNabb? Uh, he, he seems to be. Kind of Make you have the yeah. most useless. Oh my God. So people are realizing how useless he is. And he's realizing people realize how useless he is and he gets a paycheck. Right. And it's one of those things. Oh, you know, uh, all this stuff. I, you know, I need, I have uh, three kids and a wife in school and I need my paycheck. The fuck do you do? Besides sit there and scratch your bald head and occasionally go, Oh, well, uh, Warhammer 40 K is pretty racist. I like it. Like, <laughs> you know, like that's literally what you do. That's not you. You don't produce content. You don't do anything really. You don't. You don't. You aren't worthy of your paycheck. Back when you were doing the thing, when when TRS was doing the massive amounts of trolling with the TRS Expeditionary Force back in 2015, when they were trolling everywhere and doing all kinds of red pilling the normies, you were effective. Okay, Alex, you wrote the book. You actually wrote the book. He actually did, the Right Winger's Guide to Online Trolling, and it was it was good. It was, He's a he's a he's a very good online troll. Um, is he worth sixty grand a year or whatever the fuck it is he gets paid? No, absolutely not. He's a waste of fucking money. But he's Mike's buddy from way back. 
you know, with Mike's buddy from way back, back in before the libertarian days or whatever. I don't, honestly, I don't know. I don't know why they keep him, what kind of dirt he has on people. I really don't know. He is a very grating person to be around. He's terribly unattractive to look at. Uh, <laughs> he looks like a Cuban lesbian. He looks like a bald Cuban lesbian. Okay. Uh, he's like, I don't know that, bra like then, I don't know. Neanderthals don't have a brow ridge like that, but that's beside the point. Um, He's unfun. I mean, he's unfunny. He's like his like I. His he's you know he was a former EMT, so obviously he's yeah. the Surgeon General of the alt right. Uh, his like his takes on COVID, where he talked about his extensive epistemology, epistemology, whatever the fuck that word is. Um, dude, it's you're not no no you're not smart, but but he didn't get vaccinated though, so good for him. Yeah, I didn't either. Uh, Jesse did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesse took the vax. Oh, it sounds like it. There's the, the fuck your small business one where he cries about not being able to get a booster. I mean, a vaccine. Um, you know, why would you cry about a booster if you didn't get the first one? But yeah, that was the fuck your small business rant. You heard that. Yeah, I've heard it, but I, I, I didn't, I, I guess I just didn't put it together. Uh, the, you got, yeah, the, you got to listen to it. Yeah, 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 to kind of catch it. Uh, all right, I do see a super chat here from Fash Gordon. He says, it's a Hanukkah miracle. The NJP drama that should only have lasted one day has lasted eight crazy nights. Uh, ah, hi, Fash. That's what Fash said there. Uh, and Anonymous says, so Rand is going to be the new shot caller. <laughs> is he going to be, or will they elevate Randbot? Yeah, that's a good question. Do, oh do you think he'll God. finally be elevated? If they elevate Randbot, they have literally, like, the bottom of the barrel is no longer there, right? They're scraped past the bottom of the barrel. Like, this guy, dude, at the end of the stream, when they're all sucking off Sven, to can I get on the show, please? Sir? Can I get a scrap of show? Just a scrap. But, um, <laughs> you know, like, uh, yeah. Please, please, can I get on just for a minute? I just want to say hi. But, uh, yeah, dude, Rand, Dingo, those guys, none of, none of the, yeah. I do like Dingo, yeah. I'll say, but I like uh, I like him. He's just I like him, but it's him sticking around and fucking talking about gun guarding for somebody, gun guarding for TRS, sweeping for TRS. These motherfuckers that still sweep for TRS these, for for free, by the way. Dingo's never gotten paid. You sweep for these guys for free, okay? And dude, after all this shit, you're still gonna stick by me. Fuck you guys, you're dumb. All right, now I Sorry. do. I do have some callers here. Uh, Dingo can call sure. in too. I thought he might. I don't know if he's listening. No, he wants to fight. He wants to fucking argue. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if he does, I, I don't know if he's free. I'll message him uh, here in a minute. But uh, no, I don't think so. Unmute yourself. You're live on the kill stream. Hey, how you guys doing? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I'm doing great. Merry Christmas. Oh yeah, Merry Christmas. Uh, great show. Uh, it's Thank really you. interesting listening to you guys. So um, there's something I wanted to, and this is maybe stirring the pot a bit, but I thought I would. Uh, try to throw in a question. Um, there was some conversation about uh, TRS being like a fed off and having possible Jewish subversion or NJP. Well, uh, they've had overwhelming support for um, sort of the pro Russia side over the past year and a half. Um, do you have, and, and broadly in the dissident right, there's been a lot of connections. There's been a lot of support for Russia. So, um, do you think there's any, could you speak on that a little bit? Like, do you think there's some kind of like federal op Jewish subversion going on with that? Or are they just looking at it and going like, yeah, we think this is a positive thing for a pro-white movement. Are you asking me? Yes. You, Johnny, um, because you have, <laughs> you, well, I mean, on this. Bowsman, you have the Bowsman ties to, you know, to NJP, you have the barn, the Bowsman barn and all the, his, his, the seed oil baron that he is. Um, and his ties to the Kremlin. And don't forget, don't forget Hoverter's ties to fucking Alexander Dugan. He's the one who got got Dugan invited to TWP's inaugural meeting. And Dugan, he didn't go, but he sent like a letter and congratulated them <clears throat> on uh, founding the tra uh, the Traditionalist Workers Party, which I guess is traditional. It's trad to bang your mother-in-law. <laughs> yeah, I think Spencer it. also made some kind of comments on connections between someone oh. working in Russian Jewish movements being connected with the dissident, right? Um, oh. So do you think some of that is going on with TRS or NJP? And also, 100%. Uh, 100%. you know, I've heard you made comments about, I don't know, maybe this is unfair, but David Duke and, and some of what's going on there. Could you, could you address kind of all of those in a way that, I don't know, you feel is accurate? Thank you sure. for taking my question, guys. Oh, no problem. Thank you for calling in. Yeah, no problem. Uh, <clears throat> Do I think there is Jewish, Jewish subversion or like like uh, 
gay ops going on? Absolutely. I mean, I just said I, I think Tony Hovater might be part of what would be the uh, the spook involvement. Um, you know, there's Mike, Mike, who was a programmer. Nobody looks at Mike's past. Mike was a programmer at these companies who were very connected to uh, spook stuff. Um, and then you have oh, who's the other one? Jazz Hands, who Jesse says is a Fed. Uh, I mean, the guy's built like a Fed. He, you know, he's he could be. I mean, he looks like he could be a cop. You know, I mean, he's a big Polak. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he could be, you know, he could have been, I, Jazz could be a Fed. Could he have been? Sure. I don't know if he was or not, uh, but I know I know there's Fed involvement. I mean, I, there has to be. There can't not be, you know. Um, but the Russian thing, I mean, I, that that could be that could be Fed involvement steering it that way, or that just could be Bowsman books. I mean, or it could be the uh, the other thing, not just Bowsman, but the uh, they call choice architecture, where um, they start talking about something and a bunch of donations come in, you know, thanking them for that. And it's like, oh, cool. We're just going to keep steering the ship in this direction. And you get the, I forgot who wrote an article about it, but yeah, there's a whole, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a whole uh, system of steering a movement or a group in the direction you want based on donating, which I totally believe. I mean, you know, why, why wouldn't they? Now, if anybody wants to call in, we had somebody else with their hand raised and I think they might've put it down. Let me see. Oh, no, they're back. Okay. Um, exotic research, unmute yourself. You're live on the kill stream. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead, sir. Okay, yeah. Um, I just wanted to say I've kind of, uh, I've sort of lurked about uh, TRS and NJP for quite some time. I was involved in the uh, TRS Facebook group back in the, you know, 2015 to 2017 era, roughly. And uh, and then I've sort of recently been I quit politics for a while and then sort of became, you know, reacquainted with the entire scene in the past few years. But I, I never joined in JP, but I've, I've been a listener to TRS for, for a while and I, I'm sympathetic to their politics, um, obviously. But uh, I, I can't say I'm, I'm entirely surprised by this because, uh, you know, since this whole uh, incident has gone down and then this, you know, nuclear meltdown has occurred. I, it sort of reminds me of a lot of the stuff that, that happened back in, you know, the Facebook year, 2015 to 2017. And uh, it, I, I specifically remember an incident where Sven uh, became involved with this, this guy XMR. named David Balaban, Johnny who is this reported libertarian <laughs> who, had, uh, who had associations. Oh, I, I, yeah, no. I sometimes I wonder if Johnny I'm the only one who remembers rat. this guy because he was affiliated with, I think, Jayo and Baked Alaska, which, you know, don't even get me started on Baked Alaska. The guy is obviously some kind of... I, I mean, you know, he's he's schizo he's got some kind of schizophrenic who had some kind of involvement with the feds or, oh, or sure, used an informant sure. of some kind. But, uh, um, and, David, um, I still talk to David. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, I still talk to David. He's he's still around. Okay, I I wasn't aware that he was still around because he I talked to him, dude. I I am still in contact with many 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 of the old TRS guys. What what was your sock name? Uh, Andriago. Andriago Ferreira, but it's since changed. Well, I, I, I kind of, I, I was kicked out of the TRS Facebook group, actually. I was in there for about a month. Um, and then I remember making some ironic comment about abortion or something. And I think mm. Bulbasaur was the one that kicked me out. Um, he despised me, um, which I can't say was very surprising, but. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, they can, I, you know, the whole thing is just. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, no, you go ahead. I wasn't really going to say anything. So oh, I was going to say, they, that's what they do. They just kick people out. If you have a difference of opinion that they don't like, they kick you out. They kicked They kicked out um, Common Filth over an argument with Ghoul back in 2014, I believe it was. And they kicked out John Friend, who is uh, one of the editors over at Barnes Review, a really good um, friend of mine. He's been on my show a couple of times. They kicked him out because of 9-11 truth, talking about 9-11 truth. Right, because because TRS's original version, Mike's version was it was Arabs, and anybody doesn't think it was Arabs, you're fucking stupid. If you think it wasn't Arabs, I think you're fucking stupid. If you think it was Jews, I think you're fucking stupid. Right, and then they brought in Ryan Dawson to revive. Well, like you said, I I wasn't aware that he was uh he was counter he's countering the Jew 9/11 angle. That's interesting. This was before this By was pre, this was when he was still libertarian, and they hadn't really. Done any of that yet. By the way, oh, Dawson's okay. going to be on the kill stream on Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, I'll just say. But yeah, go ahead. You said they brought in Dawson. Oh, right. Yeah, they brought Dawson in to revise the narrative. And now it's the Jews did it with the dancing Israelis, but they used uh, Arabs in the planes. 
So, oh, so the Irish were the you know. Patsies. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Right, right. So anyway, so that was, yeah, that was, that was but they kicked John Friend out for disagreeing with, with Mike's sand nigger take. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't Ghoul riding around with like a 15-year-old boy or something in a car? No. I remember something about Andy. That. Okay, so there was this kid, Andy, from Chicago, and Andy was 17 or 18. <clears throat> he was like a Doogie Hauser. He was in college a year or two early. And uh, there was a big pool party up in the Chicago area with their token black guy. There was Dr. Do you remember Dr. Khan? Uh, vaguely, yeah. Yes. The only black guy in TRS. Um, he was like, <laughs> he was like the most, like, I hate self-hating ethnics. And he was the most self-hating black I've ever met. Right. But he like lived in, he had like six sisters and a stepdad in their house and he would get on Skype calls and talk shit about how his nigger family was just such I, a bunch of niggers. I, 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 I mean, just, just a little bit lighter on that because I, I don't want to oh, get. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. That's we're okay. on Tele I'm sorry. We're on Telegram, so I just assume we're. On yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're on some other yeah. basically. But, but anyway, go all ahead. Right, all right, all yeah, right. My yeah, bad. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll keep it. My bad. You should have yeah. told me first. I know, um, uh, but go ahead. That's, I'm sorry. So, um, so yeah, they, they had Andy was part of this pool party and he had a massive crush on ghoul uh he was gay clearly gay um i don't know how old the kid was but he was hanging out with the pool party people so he wasn't 15. there was no 15 year olds the okay. youngest guy involved with trs well, you never was, know i mean these people well, i mean they could rumors, be like I mean, right but the rumors i mean come on they said they they, they posted rumors that i raped my son <laughs> you know yeah. regularly regularly tony hoverner posted that and his friends yes uh yeah, so right, it kind of makes you wonder about the about uh, Conti's allegations. Now, the what are he stealing? Absolutely, was true. Yeah, I was gonna. Well, well, yeah. Well, wait, 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 wait. The the, wait, wait. Hold on, caller. Wait, wait, wait. The... Yeah, caller. Yeah, go ahead if you're gonna explain because uh, the audience might not know what were his allegations. Oh, oh was that Hoverter was was stealing money? Um, I guess I guess Conti. Uh, was afraid of, I don't know, you get nine different stories, but Con according to Hoveter, Conti was afraid of banking and it was, he was boomer and this tech scared him. And so when, when, when the money moved to another account, oh no, they're stealing. And that's not what happened. And obviously we can see what's going on with Hoveter. That's not really what's going on. He's trying to shake Mike down for money right now. Um, but yeah, Conti was right to be like, what the hell is going on? He might have been going in the wrong direction, maybe with the money, the money thing might not have been like, you know the thing but he, you know when he said what is going on he was correct to ask that yes absolutely all right caller what else you got i'll see if we have some other callers raise your hand if you want to call in all right go ahead finish uh, up that's your call. really okay. that's that's most of what that's most of what i had to say although although it is interesting uh <coughs> apparently i well you know someone else can speak it that's all I that's okay but thank <laughs> you for calling in brother i appreciate it yeah thanks man all right, now let's try. I'll try to go in order, I think. Uh, Jay, unmute yourself. Merry Christmas. Welcome to the Kill Stream. You're live. Feliz Navidad. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, Feliz Navidad, indeed. Yes, I can. Uh, hey, um, you, you know, I, to be honest, man, I, I, uh, I don't want to derail the, the show or anything like that. I, I don't really know. I don't know any of these people. I'm a proud white person, but I don't know any of these white people. I don't know any of these people. That's okay. Uh, I just wanted to call in and say... You know, keep up, keep up the hard work, man. You just gone through so many trials and tribulations, and and I I just been watching your show for for a long time, and now and uh, just keep up the hard work, man. Wow, well, thank you, man. That warms my heart, and I appreciate you saying that. Uh, thank you very kind. I hope you have a yeah. merry Christmas. That that makes me smile. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, you too. And Johnny, yeah, I mean, I don't know, you're, you're a good talker, bro. Um, right on, brother. Merry Christmas, merry Christmas, merry Christmas, Christmas, merry Christmas brother. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah, merry Christmas. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. man. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. That was awesome. Uh, uh, have a good show, guys. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, it's been a long year, uh, but things uh, the last month or two uh, really looking up. I have to say, not that I won't welcome twenty twenty four still, but I feel like uh, I'm kind of hitting <laughs> my stride right as we go into the new year. Uh, go ahead, uh, bro, Nifty, unmute yourself. Merry Christmas. You're live on the kill stream. Merry Christmas. Yeah, I don't know, Johnny. I think uh, Jesse has some reach on you, <laughs> dude. You ever you ever fought a short guy? Um, tell me, tell me about it. No. Yeah. That's okay. Everybody's the same height on the floor, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. It, 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 less, I might have that. Don't, 
I used to like to fight when I was younger. So I'm old now and I don't do it anymore, but I will fight Jesse anytime, any place, anywhere. I don't I don't know what yeah, I don't know what your opinion is on the fight club, if you have like some spoopy theory about it. Um that that word is taken off. That's totally you guys own that word spoopy and that's totally taken off. I hear Normie saying that all the whole time. Yeah. But anyways, uh, when he said who would you rather fight, he says Lincoln. I think that was extremely base because Lincoln's an absolute tyrant. I would like to fight that guy too. Yeah, totally. That's a good one, yeah. Um, um we can set up some pies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dude, we'll do it like Sam Hyde. I don't care. Yeah, yeah Sam, let's Sam do it. We've got to have a whole card of it, though. Yeah, I think we can right, set up some right. matches. Sam's like another that. one that used to hang around with TRS, dude. Really? Yeah. Sam's been to, yeah, Sam was at Jesse's house before. Oh, I didn't Gold know that, house. actually. Like, like before, when they were friends. Well, before, when they were when they were big shots, when Mike was going to New York and doing the he will not divide us thing with his fucking eyes all fucking Adderalled out. <laughs> his fucking pupils look like the fucking, look like a fucking new moon. Okay, <laughs> anime eyes. I got a picture somewhere. I'll find it. Like yeah. him, and, him and other dudes fucking looking in the fucking camera. And it's, you know, that was when Mike was trying to be skinny for a minute. And he was just, all he was doing was eating like nine Adderall at a time. But I mean, whatever, based, right? But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, uh, yeah. Meth, meth, meth is based, right? I don't know. I keep hearing this. Meth is totally based. I don't know. I'm like, I don't do drugs. I don't know. I don't do drugs. Jacuzzi, hold on, I'll, I'll, let you, I'll get back to the caller, but super chat from Jacuzzi, also mod in the chat. He says, why are all these things happening at pool parties? These NJP pool parties sound like a regular riot. That's what he said. Yeah, they're fun, dude. They're fucking drinking parties, man. I mean, yeah. It does sound like they maybe should have stuck with that. Of course, they, they're saying the same That's thing. They <laughs> they're yeah. saying that now. Yeah. That's what they should have done. Weird. <laughs> 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 all right, caller, what else you got? Striking Mike. Oh, not striking Mike, excuse me. Mike and the Medwap was a great show. I, I called in every week, and then I, I once I, I went. I was I was doing a bit, and I followed through a little too hard because I was I was absolutely drunk, and I was my bit was um, that uh, that Johnny is my only friend or whatever. And uh, <clears throat> I feel like I I'm almost responsible for for partly dissolving some of the some of the goodwill that, that happened there because uh, I talked about Jo being the toughest guy and whatever, and all of a sudden jo has gone, and then Johnny and Mike's show dissolves and it's like i feel like i'm responsible for that so i just have to apologize don't apologize man i'm glad to be out of there uh that was i mean it was a toxic thing but the deal is why did johnny stick around for so long if it was so bad well because jesse was my friend none of those other people were my friends i wasn't friends with with like mike I, mike and i were not friends we weren't i mean we were cool but we weren't like friends like jesse and i were friends you know what i mean like we did stuff as families and stuff. Mike was just the guy that was there. Uh, the other guys weren't my friends like Jesse was. So I just hung out with Jesse, really. And I overlooked a lot of the stuff because we were supposed to do a media. We were going to do an alt-right media empire, right? I was going to be the alt-rights Art Bell. That was what was going to be. Johnny's going to be the alt-rights Art Bell. I guess I still am. But, like, we were going to do media. And it didn't fucking whatever. It didn't matter about, like, this other dumb shit. I'm not a purity spiraler at the time. And I believed, I believe, Mike, at the Yid Wife crisis thing. I believed his 23 and me. I believed all this because like, they're like, they're, why would they lie? They're not going to lie to me. They're not going to lie to the guys in the fucking inner, inner circle. Right? Not going to lie to the guy that spends the night at your house with his family. You can lie to the other guys, but sure, not you. So yeah, that's, that's why I did that. And also, like I said, Jesse was my friend. None of those other guys were my friends. Now I see a, a super chat here um, and it's, I'll just say Ned. Uh, he says, a friend of mine died right after being kicked from SG. Uh, a lot of them talk so much shit about him even after death. Uh, they used his story for a Justice Report article like they cared about him and his fam. That's what he said there. And I don't know the specifics of that, but just what the, the super chatter said there. Um, Killed by SG. And he, he, got, he, he died right after being kicked from SG. Uh, kicked from SG. Yeah. I don't know what SG is. I oh, don't... support group. Yeah, support group. Yeah, support group. Um, was this the guy that died? Was this the guy that died because the cop drove through his job site? I remember National Justice guys like putting all of his like making an article about it because he was like had been maybe he was or he maybe was one of the supporters or whatever. But uh, they got like one of their fucking GoFundMe shut down because neo Nazis. You know. So that might have been that might have been it. But. All right. Well, I'll see if he clarifies it too. Um, oh, he said that's him. He said yes. 
That oh man, yeah, that was my that was one of my very very favorite people, man. I still get sad every time I think about that, man. Andrew was one of the best people ever. He got killed a uh, cop. He's a <clears throat> he's a lineman. So uh, um and and I and uh, he was an apprentice, I believe. He wasn't quite quite a journeyman. And uh, I was doing work on down power lines and a cop drove through a job through a, a work site that had cones and everything. The cop blew through it. No lights on, no nothing, just blew through it. Got hung up in the, or hit the power line that Andrew was working on. And it threw Andrew 40 feet and crushed his skull. Fuck. Yep. So, and the, and the, the state's not doing anything about it. They're not, like, yeah, they're not, they're not, no wrongful death, no nothing. Oh, so, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. All, Cobb got away with that, I'm sure. Yeah, I didn't even have to ask. So the GoFundMe's, so the GoFundMe's got put up and, you know, to help out the, the wife and the, the kids and whatever. And Justice Report was like, you know, this was a guy who was a big Paranormies fan. He got kicked out for being a Paranormies fan. Okay. That's what happened. He got kicked out of the fucking support group because he was a Paranormies fan. He would not put up with the bullshit of them talking shit about the Paranormies and blah, 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 and all that. So they kicked him out. Okay. That's what happened. And then the fucking Justice Report writes a fucking article about this guy that their guy had fucking kicked out of their fucking group. Fuck you guys. Fucking vultures. And you get clicks. I've seen that happen other places. I won't, but yeah. And, then, and because the justice report did it, because the justice report got some fucking, you know, some, some notice, it, you know, somebody noticed, some Jew noticed that, that the justice report was talking about this guy. Oh, this guy was a neo Nazi. He was in, in, you know, go fund me as soon as they hear those words. Done. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, yeah it's over immediately. So, fuck those guys. So, so maybe, maybe they did that on purpose. Maybe they knew that was going to happen. Maybe they did that shit on purpose. I don't know. I'm a conspiracy theorist. That's a deeper level there. Um, now, what else you got, caller? That's it. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. I appreciate that. Uh, all Merry right. Christmas. Now we got more callers. Call in. The more, the merrier. Oh, we still got a couple here. Well, Exotic's already called in, but if he if if I get through some more and and he's still left, I'll bring him back. Um, reality adjacent. Uh, Merry Christmas. Unmute yourself. You're live on the kill stream. Merry Christmas. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Uh, I really just have one point to make. Uh, after they did their little flip-flop on the vaccines and shit, Jesse came out and said that he has stock in Pfizer. Mm. He, was make, he was making big money off the vaccine. Well, I don't know, big money, but that's what the term he used. He says he's making big money off of it. So that could be some of the motivations behind that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, be, he, yeah. did say, yeah, yeah. he did say that his grandmother or his mother, excuse me, his mother had given him Pfizer stock. And he was getting dividends. He was collecting dividends. Yeah. Yep. Yep. His mother. And so, what kind of mom? Do you guys? Did your mom ever give you stock? <laughs> no. No, she did not. It sounds like a Jewish mom thing. She to do. gave me a lot of good things, but no, not stock. Uh, she never did do that. It sounds like a Jewish mother thing to do, to be honest. Mm. I'm gonna give you six million shares, okay? Give you some shares of stock, and now we're gonna go down to the Jersey Shore and go <laughs> hang out with the with, yeah with the Schwarzes. <laughs> See what I did there, Ralph. <laughs> I did. I did see what yeah. you did there. All right, call. What else oh, you got? I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fine. That's really bad, dude. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, now we'll take another caller. T.me slash the Ralph Retort. I also put the link in the chat uh, if you want to follow it there. Uh, Yaki Gaming, unmute yourself. Merry Christmas. You're live on the kill stream. Hey, Merry Christmas, Ralph. Merry Christmas, Johnny. Thank you. Um, so. I was uh, I wanted to go uh, go back kind of talk about what uh, caller before was talking about with like the <laughs> Russian stuff, like um, Dugan and all that because like I don't like I didn't really like I kind of stopped listening to them and like 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 PRS and stuff in like 2018 because it was just it was just also like black pilling and stuff and I think this was before the NJP so it was just like they were just on like talking about you know oh shit's fucked and you know blah 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 blah. blah. And then, you know, with this NJP stuff, I thought that it was like kind of striker brought in the, that kind of like uh, like Dugan what was it fourth political theory kind of stuff. But I didn't I didn't know that it was um, like kind of kind of came in because of the uh, the TWP or the, the kind of the, the people they absorbed from the TWP. So, um yeah, I was what I was really wondering about was that like because it seems like like you know like you were saying you know they sort of like funded or not I'm sorry they they sort of like went really hard on the on the pro Russian angle uh, once the war in Ukraine kicked off and then you know that in conjunction with uh, 
with um you know all the dugan stuff that kind of came in around that time all the the, the dugan uh, ideology and stuff that kind of came in during that time so i just wondering what you what you like knew about that or um all I know about that is, like I said earlier, is that <clears throat> Tony Hoveter was responsible for contacting Alexander Dugan and trying to get him involved with TWP. <clears throat> um, and they had, had like a congratulatory letter. He invited him to their first meetup or whatever. And he, Alexander sent them a congratulatory letter. Uh, I know he's involved in like, he's like the, the Rasputin mastermind spook behind the scenes behind Putin, supposedly. But, you know, of course not. Because you know it's just a conspiracy theory, yeah. But yeah. um, but yeah. But I mean, it's fucking out in the open, you know. <laughs> like it's a yeah. lot of these open conspiracy theories are like they're not theories, bro. You can fucking see it, you know. Oh yeah, um, yeah, totally. Yeah, and the, the Jewish oligarchs and all that stuff in Bowsman, like yeah, yeah. And then the, the reversal the jazz hands pulled on on Russia, you know. And he even wrote an article about it. My reversal on Russia. Why I changed whatever. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like uh, another thing is that like Dugan, you know, he's been quoted as saying from like really like he doesn't see Russians as you know white. He sees them as kind of like this Eurasianist sort of you know hybridized race of Europeans and Asians. And he he's said some really really not not nice things about you know white people in the past. Yeah. Which you know, I mean, he's, he's, he's white as fuck. Yeah, you know, he's, you know, quote unquote, walked it back. But like the kind of shit he said, even like, you know, uh, like a, even like a SJW, you know, would, would kind of take pause at it and be, you know, like a modern, you know, Western SJW would kind of take pause at it and be like, that's, you know, that's a little extreme for me, you know. So it's kind of like I was always like really suspicious about, you know, their their connection. And you have that picture of uh, what was it, Mike? You know, doing the soy face with all those Dugan books and stuff. Him and Tony. You know? Him and yeah. Tony. Yeah. Yeah. What a surprise. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so a I, meme, boy. It's just a meme, boy. We're just memeing, right? We're being ironic, yeah. boy. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're just ironically it's, supporting this anti white. Dude, the know? longer this guy lives, the more he looks Jewish. Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> see this dude, him and Colette, Mark Collect. Excuse me. No, wait, wait. Yeah, wait. I Mark, like Colette. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just say, I, I, I do like Mark. But anyway, go I ahead. like Mark. I like Mark. I'm not saying anything bad about Mark, but like, I saw him on Colette and like Mike looked, that's the Jewiest he's looked in a long time. Uh, well, thing I wasn't going to say anything bad. No, about I, I was just prefacing. I wasn't going to stop you if you had something <laughs> bad to say. I just wanted, just in case. I no, just he, wanted well, to. Well, he keeps, I don't know. I want to see what happens now. Well, he had Colette, on, I mean, he had Mike on after like meltdowns had started. I want to see if Colette's still going to stick around with these guys, if he's going to still have them on. Like, is he going to still have Stryker on, even though Stryker's no longer? Right? Because he's had Stryker on a few times. So, like, I'd like to see – I want to see the fallout from all this shit to see if, like, you know, everybody else – like, I know David Duke has Stryker on all the time. He doesn't give a fuck. Like, yeah. yeah. He gets it seems like it seems like a lot of a lot of the guys – just from what I see on Telegram, a lot of the guys in Patriotic Alternative, they were kind of, like, running defense for them at first, but then they kind of they kind of just, like, you know – Put it, they kind of just stopped talking about it after a while. So, you know, I, I don't know. Like, um, but another thing I wanted to bring up was that uh, Mike's surname, which was what, Painovich. Yeah. Like yeah. the O, the Ovich kind of, and like, that's a pretty, like, like Roman Abramovich is one of the Russian, the Jew, you know, the Jewish Russian mm. oligarchs. And it's like kind of like, like this it's sort of like Stein or whatever in, in Eastern Europe as you know, when you see someone right, with the last right. name, like, Oh bitch, it's kind of like, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, to, I was always kind of suspicious about that. He said he was, what well, was well, he? He said Norwegian he was like, and he, Serbian. Now come on. Yeah. Now listen, hold on. Extra down let me, on the let me, Norwegian. Michael Isaac Enoch Painovich. Yeah. I just say his whole name to somebody and they're like, wow, is he a rabbi? <laughs> yeah he's missing a schmooly in there that's about it like, <laughs> yeah, a blad or a berg right but like come on like his family had to, like they had to escape persecution who has ever had to escape religious persecution in europe <laughs> you know what i mean i yeah. mean and oh yeah. maybe his father and mother-in-law his father and his stepmother lied like jews will lie to the press oh, yeah. to Marantz, to another jew Marantz for the Marantz tapes are you fucking oh my god <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not really like I said. I'm not really up on on a lot of the like. I don't know. Like I said, I, I kind of like listened to him briefly from like I want to say yeah. like 2015 to like 2018. Right. It was always kind of just something I listened to, but it, I never got like involved. I didn't even go on the forums or anything, you know. So right, you're you're uh, so lucky. You never did. You're so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's the place is a fucking nightmare. It's literally well now it's Jesse and it's Jesse and Jesse's hug box. You have uh Jesse yeah. and Bordelay. Fucking those two fucking nerds. But uh yeah. where they ban her. Imagine somebody that looks like Borzoi calling you a gay nerd. <laughs> like like I literally can't I met the guy when I mean, we we a bunch of us, you know, when I was still cool and everybody was still friends, uh coaching his wife and some friends rented two big, like 12 bedroom beach houses. We all chipped in and everybody rent, you know, it was a bunch of people from TRS, a bunch of families in one house and a bunch of single people in the other house. And Borzoi showed up. He was there for three days. How much sand do you think he saw? (laughs) Not a lot, I guess. (laughs) Now take a guess. How, how much time did he spend at the beach in three days? Uh, We We were literally, okay. We were literally the house across the street from us. The back of their yeah. house was the beach. So we, we had to walk across the street to get to the beach. So how much Say, sand did you actually see? Uh, I guess maybe like four, four hours worth over the whole weekend. Zero. Ugh. He never <laughs> went to the beach. He never went to the beach. He went outside like twice. Damn. <laughs> did he just, like, just like playing yeah, video he games hung out or on something? Computer. He just hung out uh, on yeah. his computer, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like, and that's the guy banning you on the forum calling you gay nerd. <laughs> yeah, I also heard. I also heard like uh, that was it. Borzoi's wife, oh, like her nose is, a, is like an emote uh, on. Uh, uh, yes, yes, her nose is an emote. That's that source of it. Yeah, you guys, you guys need to get that down. And you're screaming at Graph on post. You fucking pedophile! You need to take that down. Maybe like you're gonna call me a pedophile and ask me to do you a favor. <laughs> Suck my entire dick. Like, and then he's like, "Fine, I'm taking other Jesse and leaving." And they both rage quit post like a bunch of faggots. That was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Taking definitely. my ball well, and leave, dude. Nobody misses you. Fuck off. <laughs> they've been chased literally trs has been chased off of every media platform they've ever been on right they don't go <laughs> they back to the big on. ones they don't go back to the Kick big ones they could go back to facebook they could go back to twitter they can i'm on twitter again they could go back they're yeah. not that man fuck off yeah i they wanted that want I, I don't understand they why don't. they're not on twitter in a big way i mean they don't they're... want to because that means they have to they they that means they have to interact with people and their whole thing is they only wanted to get so big so that they didn't have to interact, but still make enough money to still do a thing. But they had to give fucking lip service to wanting to expand, right? Yeah. But they can't because people like Borzoi and Mike can't be out in public with normal looking people because they're not normal looking people. They're afraid of yeah. guys with muscles. They're afraid of guys that are Chad, you know? I know, um, I know, uh, I know, I, th- I, th- I forget who, I think it was Jesse, but I think that so someone was given like Keith Woods a lot of shit for being on Twitter like a couple months back with the bad right. ADL thing. And yeah. So Keith Keith Woods now on his Telegram, he's posting like a, he's taking a victory lap too. You know, he's he's posting a lot of uh I did see that a lot of air yeah. 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 He is, yeah. And good for him. Good for yeah. him. Yeah. He took that humongous L on the COVID vaccine. So it's good to see that he gets a win. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. He took like, he the biggest L of all time on the COVID vaccine. Anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I do remember. Yeah, I wonder why. I wonder why. Hmm. Yeah. At least he wasn't as dumb. You know what? I'll give him he was wrong. <clears throat> but he wasn't as dumb as TRS. TRS's take on COVID was that it was Jews shutting down the world because Orthodox Jews were going to give him Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, which, yeah, is very that, dead, which is very deadly to Jews. Especially like with the, with um, what was it Sven and the whole uh, no, what was it? it was Jesse? Excuse me. I think I wasn't. I forget who, but the one who was like, That's oh guy. okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I said, I, I'm not. Yeah, you're good, bro. The, you're good. Keep but, going. Um, yeah, going. well, like you know, he was he was like 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 we were saying earlier, he was advocating for the vaccine when you know the NSDAP was like very anti-vaccine because you know the fe- the the guy who discovered that quote unquote discovered or whatever vaccines was Jewish, you know, mm. so it was like yeah. you know it's it's like oh they want to you know they want to be the the NSDAP but they're not even you know they want to be NSDAP two point but they're not f- even following like you know basic tenets or you know the belief systems of them so it's you know. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing. It's like you say that to them, and they just fucking that was a whole different time and meaning. And now, dude, I have a clip of Jazz Hands actually saying, "I think Dr. Fauci really has the country's best interest at heart." Jesus, like, like are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? And then, and, and then, and this is the guy. Well, yeah, no wonder he wanted to shoot me. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude. Over, over, yeah. over, over this stuff. Yeah, you know, you want these these people want to want this. These people say things like, "When we take power, like, bro, 
you couldn't take candy from a baby. Like, stop. You're not taking anything. <laughs> <laughs> they get they get pissed off with me like if I don't wear my seatbelt, dude. I don't I don't like seatbelts, right? Don't fucking regulate, you know, like yeah. brain stuff, right? I, I'll wear a seatbelt when I want to. Anyway, like we get my we get my truck, and Jesse's like, "Put your seatbelt on. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Like that's illegal. Like oh, you're such a fucking Nazi, dude. You don't want to. Don't do that. Like you know what I mean? Like shut the fuck yeah. up, dude. Like when we take power, you're a pussy, dude. Like none of you guys touch grass or get laid. You're gonna take power. Shut the fuck. We're gonna put Johnny Monoxide up against the wall. Okay, <laughs> okay, bro. Okay, I've yeah. been lifting a little bit recently. I like to see you try, <laughs> dude. I'm telling you, I am getting to be in the best shape I have ever been in. I'm working on that, dude. Like I'm not yeah. huge, but I'm getting into like good fighting type shape. So. Yeah, I, I, it sucks. I've been like, I've been having to move recently, so I haven't been able to do anything, and I've just been eating like really, really crap. You know, really yeah. a lot of goy flop, basically. So. Ah, it's a shame. Uh, this motherfucker <laughs> yeah. actually wrote a song about how bad he hates to do squats. He's such a pussy. <laughs> I hate fucking squats. Da -da -da -da. I hate fucking squats. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, that's a real good parody song. Really did really good shit for white people, didn't it? You fucking uh, faggot. Yeah. And, oh, and then speaking of which, uh, I saw earlier today how uh, yeah, Jesse was saying about how his uh, his Henry Rollins parody did more for the white race than like oh, anything else. Oh, my God. So I did a parody <laughs> of a CIA plant in the punk movement. Oh, yeah. I was actually just watching a video about that, how it was like, yeah, that one guy, he was like a CIA agent's kid, and then he managed a bunch of different, like the cramps apparently hated yeah. him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy how it just happens every single fucking time. Weird, huh? Yeah, all these all these Johnny's major subcultures. Johnny's yeah. just a schizo who suffers from pareidolia. Yeah, no, it's just like, well, that's the thing is that, you know, a lot of these like subcultures actively, even though you know, they were pre presented as like, oh, rebelling against the man, a lot of them, you know, just further like, you know, the, the Jewish kind of, you know, plan, like, like the hippie movement, especially like, I think oh that was like kind of like their most successful, uh, you know, psyop was you know it, 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 every single one of them has been very punk wasn't as successful, but it did take a chunk. You notice that every single one of these these movements is always geared towards white people, towards yeah. white kids. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's, yeah, it's just even the know, rap movement, the rap movement, like the like the concerts and stuff. I've been to many rap shows when I was younger. There's not many blacks <laughs> at these big rap shows. It's all white kids. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and always it's like. That. With the hip hops, it's just like they with the hip hop, it's just like they completely cut out like the middleman. It's it was all managed and you know, top right. down, controlled by Jews, you know. Straight up by Jews. I loved yeah. in uh Straight Out of Compton that the guy who was their actual NWA's manager was pissed off that they made him look so Jewy in the movie, but then you see him in real life and you're like, Bro, they did you such a favor. <laughs> yeah, like Shlomo, what the hell? <laughs> Jerry <laughs> Heller. Like, That's his name. The nose down a few inches. Who? Yeah. What's his name? Jerry Heller, I think. Uh, ah, Jerry uh, Heller. That's right, Jerry Heller. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember. It, it's like they did. They made him look halfway. They, he was Jewy, obviously, but they made him look better than he looks in real life. Yeah, I remember when I was watching. Uh, like when I was a kid, because you know when I was a kid, I liked rap too, and I was watching the uh, the video for it was Jay Z's Ninety Nine Problems, and in the video it had like Rick Rubin, who was you know his Jewish producer. <laughs> it had the whole yep. thing with him getting like pulled over by the police. And like it had Rick Rubin in the side. I'm like, who is this fucking like weird ass ZZ Top looking dude? And you know, why is he hanging out with Jay Z? Only well, to find out later that, oh yeah, it's his, you know, Jewish producer. Well, Rick Rubin and um, Russell Simmons were college. This story goes that they were college roommates at uh, NYU and they came up with Def Jam Records. Yeah. And Metal and Blade, we, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, what was it? Liar Cohen. Was he? Liar Cohen. What? what Lear, yeah, Lear, Lear, Cohen. Yeah. Lear Cohen, yeah. I forget which, uh, like, he was like probably the biggest guy. In, I forget which, uh, was it, um, I think he helped, what was it, did he help P. Diddy start Bad Boy? Or I, I forget what he was, what he, but I he was like a really true, big yeah. guy too. Yeah. I'd have to double yeah. check on that, but yeah, he definitely. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm not too clear on it either. I just know he was mm. like a big guy in rap, but yeah, you know, a, a Cohen. Well, from the yeah. beginning, like again, from the beginning, there was all Jews from the top down. They didn't, they didn't do any stuff like they did with, like they did with uh, any other movements. But in the music yeah. industry, like, well, the, that's the thing is the people that are in it aren't Jews. The people behind the scenes always are. Just like with um, how we did the uh, "Don't Fear the Reaper." Who is that? Not Thin Lizzy. Uh, Blue Oyster Cult. 
the Blue Oyster Cult. We did that show in the Blue Oyster Cult. Totally forgot their name. I'm spacing. Yeah. Uh, their manager, Sandy. What's his name? Oh, God. God damn it. I need my intern. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Sandy, Sandy Perlman. What's his name? I don't have. Uh, Sandy who? Perlman? Is, that's, that's what it says. Sandy there. Perlman. That's right. Yeah. Like, come on, dude. Sandy Perlman. Like, all the managers, all the managers for all the shows, all the bands, all the time have always been juicy. Oh. Oh yeah, well, and then Blue Oyster Call. If you really want to get into that, because like I was, I was a pretty big fan of them too. Like their whole band symbol was like the symbol of like Saturn. You oh know, yeah, we did a whole show on them, dude. Yeah. yeah. Our buddy mm. Eric Heathnat from Metal Up Your Fash. Another good show. Oh, cool. Mm. All right, what else you got, caller? I'm gonna have to cut it because I got. I'm gonna try to get in a, this last yeah, caller. Yeah, I, was just gonna say, I've been, uh, I think I'll it's time go. for me to take. No, that's okay. I let you go long. I, I enjoy your calls. You call in before, so I will let you go a little bit long. But. All right, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, well, you know, Merry Christmas, everyone. It was great talking to you, Ralph. It was great talking to you, Johnny. Um, Merry Christmas. Yeah, yeah Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Indeed. Big Red got his hand up. All right, yeah, I'm about to bring him in right now. Actually, nice. Uh, nice. go ahead, Big Red. Unmute yourself. Merry Christmas. You're live on the kill stream. Okay, well, you know what? Just raise your hand when you're free, and I'll bring you right back after that. Uh, okay. Um, long line, blank, no one. Unmute yourself. Merry Christmas. You're live on the kill stream. Merry Christmas. Um, yeah, so I'm just curious about uh, Manor Bond and Coach and Rusty, if CI allegations and whatnot, if you have any info on that, Johnny. Um, what do you want to know about, about Coach? Well, I know um, I, was, I was friends with them back in the day because I'm an old TRS pool party guy from 2015. So, like, I got out like a couple years ago. When were, you friends, were you friends in the, uh, in the pilots or are you friends in the uh... – uh, In the area, yeah. I knew Coach. Uh, but okay. When, and uh, when J.O. was living with them and whatnot. Okay. I think you were in the area too. I was, yeah. Dude, were you ever at a pool party with me? Uh, no, I think the one time we met was the, uh, the NJP launch at the barn party. Okay, right on. At Bowsman's. I used, used to go by uh, Stannis to Manus on the forums and whatnot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What's up, guy? What's going on? Yeah, good, good talking to you again. Good talking yeah. to you, man. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I, I, I'm a nobody, but I can verify pretty much like everything you're saying from what I know. Mm -hmm. So anybody else out there, he's right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, because I, I got out of the stuff when NJP kind of formed because I saw like the TWP 2.0 vibes or like Hovind and Striker just upgraded the neckbeard. Basically, yeah, it's, and, it's uh, crazy. Yeah, because uh, there's all it's just UWP 2.0 again so with all the orthodox stuff. Because I'm surprised. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Raphael Johnson, Matthew Raphael Johnson, didn't come over because he was big into that stuff too with the Dugan. I don't remember. I don't remember him at all. But I remember all the other. I remember all the other TWP weirdos, dude. When they showed up the first time at Mania in uh, in Florida. That was the first time I met Tony. And it was Tony and uh, a couple other guys that ended up doing the work work thing with him. And Walrus, who is the co-host of Exodus Americanus. Who, yeah, uh, I, yeah, yeah. He was, I, I heard some things about him, but when I hung out with him, we were cool. I liked him personally. Who, Roscoe? Uh, Walrus. Oh, Walrus? Yeah, Walrus. I've, I've, other than Walrus being a spur who talked over me the whole say. time they had me on the show. He's a faggot, uh, in yeah. my opinion. But I have my own personal reasons okay. to think that outside no, cool. of this. <laughs> okay, well, I've never. Okay, he's listen. I'm being nice. He talked no, over fine. me the whole time. Yeah. I was on the show, so like, fuck him. Anyways, he's very and, and, uh, and long winded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, extremely long winded. I know, I know he. Then, anyway, but yeah, but then, yeah, okay, so I've hung out a few coach. times with Walrus, but yeah. no, that's fine. Like, you don't have to hate him, or you don't have to not like him because I don't. No, dude, people IRL. The guy like Walrus IRL is different, right? Yeah, sure. When I hung out with him, when I hung out with him at the NPI event. In uh, Indiana, that the 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 Spencer the Spencer Conti meltdown when I was there, uh, Walrus was great, dude. He was a cool guy. We drank bourbon together. He he brought some high country or some fucking crazy fucking expensive bourbon. It was great, you know. We had a good time. But online, he's a whole totally you know different person. We got it. We used to get into it over like the historicity of Jesus and whatever. And it's like, oh my god, here we go again. Many but, such um, cases of online people. Absolutely, bro. You know for a fact. So, <clears throat> um. You were in Coach's chat, right? Uh, years ago, yeah. It's been a long yeah, time. Okay, so yeah. So back, I, I but anyway, back, the right, no, no, I'm talking about back then, though. I'm still talking about like when we back then. So these guys, yeah, I mean, 
I don't know. The, I don't. The TWP guys showed up out of the blue. They're at Mania, and the next thing you know, Tony's in with TRS, and it's a bunch of TWP guys that are doing stuff now. There was a TWP podcast on there. Yeah, it was a, uh, ho- action. Yeah, yeah, it came on like right before the box broke. Yeah, it was it was Hoveter and fucking Heimbach. Heimbach. Yeah. yeah, it was terrible. Oh my god, it was terrible. Um, yeah, and Heimbach. I have friends IRL who knew him before he got in the movement, and I knew him when he did the White Student Union bit at Towson, and, and yeah. he's a whole larper. Like he does the whole front as working class, but he's like a trust fund kid whose parents were uh, um, school superintendents in Montgomery County, like richest DC suburbs of Maryland. Yeah, he went to like he Towson. Was, so he went to like some rich little school, right? No, Towson was a bigger school. It's like twenty thousand, but it's basically just it's shit lived heaven. That's where Stella Umbrella went too. Oh, that guy. He's he's doing good. He's married, got a kid. He's doing good. Yeah, that's good to hear. That's good for him. I'm glad. Even though he's the Michelin and whatever, I'm glad he's doing good. <laughs> you know? Yeah. All right, call it real no, quick. Because I'm gonna. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean, for, how many people want to kick, is, kick him out because that shit? Fucking Striker is like, oh, kick him out. He's a fucking Jew. He's a fucking. I told you guys the first time I ever met Striker, what he wanted to do. No, I don't think. Or you might he, have last year. It was but, me. Yeah. It was me and Mike and Demarcus Leibowitz were at a bar and there was Striker and Striker. There's four of us. He ordered. 12 shots of straight vodka, three shots per person, and said, come on, let's yeah, go fight right. some Jews. Let's go beat up some Jews. <laughs> yeah, I knew Strike. I knew Stryker before he called himself Stryker. He just went by Nazi Joe because I knew him through Patty Tarleton, who I knew from. I Florida. know Patty very well. He told me about Nazi Joe. Yeah. Yeah, Patty's a good guy. I haven't talked to him. I lost touch with him because I got off Facebook and whatnot, but I know he got out of stuff. He got. Yeah, his, his wife got sick and he got out of everything. Time. I don't blame him because his family. Yeah, no, absolutely. He's a great guy. Yeah, yeah, great. yeah, yeah man. Yeah. yeah, Patty's the man. But uh, yeah, like Coach, I always thought was a great guy. Like, I had some issues after Seville. He st- he stepped up, helped me out with some things. So when like Sven was talking shit on him, I was I don't know. Yep. Well, yeah, I mean, I like Coach. I I mean, I don't know. Like, dude. I haven't I... talked to him much in a couple of years, so I don't know what happened with him and the Manor Bond and Rusty. I know there's drama there with Nam basically being the OG grifter. Yeah. Yeah, I thought Rusty was hanging out listening earlier, but uh, he's he, Rusty's around still. Um, I like Rusty too. I I met him a few times. And he's always I like Rusty. Rusty. I mean, you know, I like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like I like yeah, I like all those guys. I like them. All I don't back know. I, I don't know on the online drama, but I just know when I hung out with them in person. They, yeah, they, that's yeah, the thing. That's cool. These people were good in person. Yeah. All right, Colin, I'm going to have to cut you short. Very cool, though. I appreciate you. No worries. Th- get, get... Thanks for having me on. No, Merry no Christmas problem, man. Yeah, Merry Christmas right on, to you, bro. too. Good to talk Cause, to you Because I, I want to get Big Red Definitely. in, and I have to do a debate in like 11 minutes, so I want to make sure I get him in. Uh, and go ahead, um, Big Red, unmute yourself. Uh, oh, and, and, you guys hear me? Yeah, I can. Uh, Merry Christmas. I'm going to let you talk for a second. I'm going to step away for just a second, so don't do anything too crazy. <laughs> well, hey, I'm Ralph, gone. Ralph, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, go ahead, Ralph, Big Red. Ralph, Ralph, no, say I'll be right back no, in one right. minute. No problem, man. Go ahead. Okay. Man. Merry Christmas, uh, everybody. Uh, people might know me as the guy who does the uh, fat cut Enoch impression, where I'm like, dude, like people want to hate for no reason, blah blah blah. I just want to say shout out to all the A logs. Shout out to T A S O W N. Everybody over there, shit's been going crazy. Um, I just had a question for Johnny, really quick. Um, What's up, bro? What do you? I mean, what do you think? Who do you think the next person? is going to be to kind of get the shaft. I, I think it might be Warren, but, I mean, it's kind of – Well, according to sources, all... the big logs are trying to make an exit. Okay. I so, mean, it makes sense, but, I mean, yeah. I know Warren's dad, I think, worked with William Pierce, if I'm not mistaken. So, I don't know if he has experience in, like, this kind of fracturing type of stuff or what. Um, I mean, it's, I don't know what he did for – Pierce, I mean, he could have just been a guy who, like, you know, checked tickets at the door or something, or like, you know, who knows? I don't know what he really did. I, nobody knows what he really did. But that's his bona fides is that he worked for William Luther Pierce. Nobody knows anything about it, right? But he ran in an election in West Virginia and came in dead last. He got like mm-hmm. negative votes or something. Um, so, like, and it kind of seems like too, like Sven kind of is like. I don't know, just recently on Bang or whatever, it was kind of like blaming Warren, like saying like he's the one who kind of started this whole yeah. kind of fake it till you make it, sh- sh- you know, shtick. So, well, I mean, that's the thing in business nowadays. I mean, Warren said he's been listening to female motivational speakers. So, <laughs> I mean, 
No, 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 bro. Now, don't laugh, Ralph. This is a very Sorry. big thing in business nowadays because girl bosses are very important people, all right? So don't you dare. Don't you you're get right. canceled now because you're disdaining women bosses, Ralph. It's my male um, chauvinism. You're right. All right. Yeah, I know. Male chauvinism can't have that. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it's a big thing, dude. And it's, it's, yeah, it's a girl boss deal is what it is. <laughs> that's exactly. Cool. That's literally it. That was just my question. I didn't want to hold up anyone's time too long. Thanks again, Ralph. No, it's okay, man. Everyone have a Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry right Christmas on. to you too. Shout out to all the right. A-Logs. <laughs> <laughs> Big, yes, yes, yes. yes. Shout awesome. out my boys, the A-Logs. The yeah. absolute state of white nationalism is the new A-Log podcast. <laughs> uh, it's going to it's going on quite a few episodes now. It's going to be continuing. I'll be on Sunday. We're going to be since there's no um, Hans is on Hans Gruber is on mm-hmm. Exodus Americanus tonight with Roscoe and Walrus <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here with you, Ralph. And Sunday I'm going to be on T A S O W. And I always fuck it up. <clears throat> I want to call it Towson, but it's Tazon, but um, the absolute state of white nationalism. Well, we're going to talk about this Jesse Dunstan meltdown some more. Uh, but tonight they normally do their thing on Thursdays, but yeah, shout out to Hans and house Jeep and, uh, Mike Ma and Lenny and are my boys in the in the, in the, yeah. the, the yeah. caller queue. Yeah, I was Is just about to bring him in. Yeah, I'm just about to bring yeah. him in. Uh, and I think yeah. that might be the last caller. I'm glad you came in early because we could have went even longer with this. Uh, oh, absolutely. And, and I had to debate it. And I, I was like, oh, seven to nine, no big deal. And it's like, oh, yeah, wow, right, maybe bro. should have gave it another hour, actually. Uh, <clears throat> uh, unmute yourself. It's a six hour stream that he did, man. So <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, caller Mike Ma there. What's up, Johnny? What's up? <laughs> What's up, bro? Ralph? What's up, brother? Uh, well, well, I would be on my normal mic, but my uh, graphics card kind of shit the bed the other day. So you're, you're having the worst computer problems ever, <laughs> dude. I know. I know. I I I, I think it is. Um, Tony sucks dick for cock over. I think he's uh, breaking in and breaking shit in my computer. That's got to be my running is, theory. Yeah, it can't it can't be anything else. <laughs> if I remember correctly, this didn't start until I started doing the absolute state of white nationalism. So it makes That's sense. Right. That's right. Yes. As in case anybody doesn't recognize his voice, this is my former intern, good friend, Otter Waffen Jack. So, oh, yeah. Jack. I saw him in chat. Yeah. Hell yeah, boy. Yeah. So, um, so bro, how, how tired are your legs from running these victory laps, bro? Dude, I might need to amputate them. They hurt so bad. <laughs> I, I mean, I haven't been this vindicated since that time I won Trivial Pursuit against my wife. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like when you beat your wife in a game of Pictionary, the game that's caused more divorces than anything else on earth. It's not a bridge, bitch. God. No. Um, <laughs> so, no. Uh, yeah, dude. I, I, I'm i never. I mean, I'm always right. The paranormies are always right. But I don't think I've ever been this right about so much stuff so quickly. Holy shit. Dude, it, like it just when I think like it, it's like, OK, it's going to be a little bit until uh, the next domino falls. And then all of a sudden it's. 10 o'clock at night, and I'm getting people DMing me like, dude, dude, Spence having you? a fucking meltdown on Rand You got like, DMs, bro? You got DMs? I got like 130 D- I woke up this morning, oh, and like, I've never seen my DMs like this. Like, what the fuck? Like, they're like, Johnny... Well, all I saw is, I went to bed last night at like 10 o'clock, because I got work this morning, right? So uh, Hans posted, Johnny Spence says he loves you! I was like, what? And I went to bed. That was the last I said of anything. And when I got up this morning, and I listened, I was like, what the fuck? What is all this shit? And it, that six-hour thing was like, oh my god, my but our buddy Marco there, A Log Marco, uh, is our our uh, sound guy. He's been he's been been clipping all these Jesse clips. Like to thank him for all of that, man. But uh, yeah, what a fucking! I didn't expect it to be this big of a meltdown. I don't think TRS can recover from this. I don't think so. Like your main guy just went out there and shit on you, Mike. Literally shat on you. Called you a fucking bum. Called you a lazy fuck. You know. You're fucking your boss or whoever the fuck it is. I mean, like, uh, like I mean, your, your boss. Even in cool. Sven's own words, he said it's over. Yeah, he said it's over. Um, you know, I mean, like, I mean, I can't. Uh, how can I hold all these clout coins? Like, Jesus Christ. Somebody play a fucking cha-ching drop. Like, Jesus, fuck. Like, um, <laughs> so many things we've been right about this. We called we called the failure of this. That when, okay, when TRS Exposed started up over a year and a half, they only had 10 subscribers. We were A-logging them back then, to, talking about what a grift the NJP was, you know, the National Jewish Podcast Party. Uh, because, national, yes, the, the, the yeah, National Jewish Podcasters, which is totally true, dude. You've got, 
we, like from the beginning, it was a grift. And now Mike calls it a grift. Now everybody, they call it a grift. They said it was a grift. This is just a, a, a vanity project for the chairman. He got his koi pond out of it, though. He got his gazebo. He got his money, his all the money that he ran off with. Everybody who ever donated a penny to NJP, just remember that those guys ran off with your money and they promised you the world. They promised you they were going to do white advocacy. They promised you they were going to do all these things for white people. They were going to do important things for white people. All they did was do fucking 15, man, 15 fat man protests in front of fucking a closed courthouse on a Sunday in a shitty town in Ohio. They promised the that they would line me and you up against the wall and shoot us. Yes, they're gonna line us up against Didn't the wall. Even and get shoot that. Us. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Good job. Good luck with that. Good luck with that, you guys. Um, but 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 they're gonna do all this stuff. Anybody who's ever donated to them, you should be embarrassed. You should be embarrassed because over three years they have six hundred paying supporters. If they're trying, they're not trying very hard. And if their message is so palatable and acceptable to every white person on earth, why is it only six hundred? You guys are fucking losers, bums. Get fucking jobs, or if this fucking gay op is over and it's being sunsetted, sloppy job, Assad. Also, nice try, FBI. Matt Parrott uh, is here. Um, I don't know if oh, what he's Jesus. what he's saying or or what, but we only got a couple minutes. Uh, he said I wouldn't let him call in, which of course I, w I would ah. if you want to. Yeah, but, well, Matt. Yeah, but he doesn't. He's not saying anything. So, Matt, are you on? Can you hear me? Yes, Matt is here. Um, how ah. are you doing, gentlemen? I'm doing great. Up, uh, good to hear. Um, uh, there there uh, were several inaccuracies. Um, I don't have enough time to go over all of them, uh, but I'd, I'd uh, like to correct the record on a few things related to TWP. Um, and oh, nobody cares about TWP, that. Matt. Seriously. You just talked about it for... Uh, I know, but like, uh, honestly, there, go ahead. Go ahead, correct the record. Yeah, just quickly. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, go ahead. Quick, dude, quick. He's got to do a debate, quick. No, no, I, I, I just said if, if at a later date you would like to explore. Oh that, yeah, sure, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll have anybody. Yeah. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Excellent. Okay, you guys have a good evening. Yeah, no problem. Right, man. I appreciate you getting in. Sorry, it was uh, right at the end, but yeah, I wasn't stopping anybody from calling in. Um, and I don't okay. really know that much about the CWP uh, except the you know the end of it or whatever. But uh, it's over with. Yeah, 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 I do know that. But thank you, man. Yeah, we'll get yeah. you on sometime. Thank you, brother. Uh, Merry Christmas. All right. Yeah, I don't know the whole. That's all right. Thing. If you gotta get out of here, let me do my shout outs real quick. Yeah, do your two. shout outs. All right. Shout out to all my A logs, Hans, House Jeep, Jack, obviously, uh, you, uh, all my Paranormies bros, Dogbots, Reinhardt, Skull, uh, Grognak, who just had two brand new babies born, twins. Congratulations on your Christmas babies, bro. Um, Shout out to everybody else who's involved with the show. I can't think of everybody else right off the top of my head. But uh, total A log victory, Johnny Monoxide won. Um, Typhus, shout out to Typhus. Shout out to uh, my boys over in the 4000 group Harold, Griff, Hoob, Genie, all you motherfuckers. I told you, I told you, I fucking told you. Okay? I have no reason to lie about any of that stuff, you guys. If I was wrong about TWP, Matt, then I was misinformed. But I, nobody cares, dude. That shit was fucking seven years ago. Nobody gives a fuck, okay? Anyway, um, Ralph, thanks for having me on, bro. Yeah, man, uh, it was you awesome. come by and shoot the shit with me, or I'd I come by any time, dude. I definitely yeah. would do that, and I'd love to have you back. Yes. Uh, big show tonight, yes. and uh, thank you for taking so much time out of your night to spend with me, man. Dude. Bro, absolutely. I was excited to be here last time. People were like, I was a little nervous because all this shit was going on. I was like, I was scared, dude. I was getting death threats and shit, right? Death, I got death threats from these motherfuckers. We have more, which were fucking phony, by the way. He's nobody's going to fucking come. But Jazz Hands actually was going to fucking kill me. Are you fucking serious right now? Like, if I knew his real name, I would actually supposedly do know his real name and could dox that motherfucker and should, but I'm not going to. Taking the high road. Rare to hear fuck him to kill <laughs> Fuck that guy. Dude, fuck that guy, though, dude. Fuck that guy. And fuck Jesse. Fuck you, dude. You lying snake. You fucking try to take that. Oh, Johnny fucking did me dirty. You fuck you, dude. Fuck you. Everybody confirmed that what I said is true. Get fucked in your Jewish community center fucking synagogue having gated community, faggot. Thank you, bro. All right. Good night, I, Ralph. I love you, bro. And good night. I love you too, man. Merry Christmas. Take it easy. Merry Christmas. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.